to World of Terra, a D&D game. Uh, I am Ark, or Jason, your DM. With me, as always, is Lex, playing Shay. Hello. We have Grim, played by Bobby. Hello. We've got George, playing uh, Tesora. Howdy. And uh, unfortunately, Lark's, uh, or Matt, can't be with us today. He is at a 40k tournament. Uh, losing profoundly. Um, Go Lark! Who know the rules. But uh, we will pick back up with him um, next week um, for the purpose of the game. Um, Bebo will be at Fizwix getting upgrades for level 6. I believe he is adding uh, the feat Sentinel to his arsenal. Anyway, uh, previously on D&D, the party was faced with a giant meowing cat who the cat trash just, just woke up um, and is needy um, with a final room in the temple of brass that they had been exploring this kind of odd place um, dating back from the Daxian Empire or possibly before it um, lots of traps lots of danger some puzzles of how to uh, move forward into the final room uh, the final room contained a sarcophagus with some sort of knight and the symbol of elemental earth on it, and I would like to make a correction from previous games. Um, I showed you this symbol. This is not the rune for earth. Um, I went back and checked my own art and notes. Uh, don't worry about what this is. That's not important. Mm, this, marking that page in my notes. This is the symbol of, of elemental earth. I had my uh, my top and bottom of the wheel uh, backwards in my mind. Um, so, GSTM, get your lore straight. Hey, you guys are the ones who played <laughs> runes. You should know. What is that learning from you guys ten years ago? Um. Anyway, uh, the party investigated the knight's sarcophagus, found that he had uh, the jade amulet that they were after. This um item of uh, power that Minerva had told them about and that Tessa uh, had asked for and that Badger had offered to pay for. The amulet itself is a little like dragon emblem um, made of jade and inlaid with gold uh, filigree for the lion work. Um, the knight came to life, obviously, <laughs> and fought them. Um, the party spent several rounds attempting to push him off of the platform into the jagged, spiky crystals below, finally succeeding, um, only to have his body erupt into essentially the equivalent of a bone naga, just a giant snake spine eruption thing with unhinged jaws and uh, crazy bitey powers. Um, they beat that, stole some stuff from him, and made their way back to town. On the way out of the Knoll Cavern, where the Dark Shrine had been um, leeching power from this temple and had been corrupting the landscape and empowering the Knolls, the party sensed an ambush um, at the bridge. This ambush actually turned out to be bugbears and a goblinoid force um, ambushing the Knoll hunting parties that were returning to their uh, their lair. The Knolls and Bugbears fought, the Knolls um, mostly coming out ahead, just overpowering the Bugbears, with the exception of the party um, fighting on the Knoll side, attempting to win curry favor with the, the Goblinoids. Uh, eventually, there was a deep rumble and some splashing, and a Goblin riding a giant toad leapt out from under the bridge, followed pretty soon after by a massive swamp troll. Uh, the swamp troll started tearing into the knolls, the goblinoids rallied, and the party ran very fast to get back to Grensmont. Um, upon reaching Grensmont, the party decided to visit Minerva, who told them a little bit about the, the amulet, told them it had um, earth powers and um, was a fairly powerful neck, uh, amulet, but not uh, something that wasn't potentially achievable outside of the amulet for someone like Grimm. 
um, implying that perhaps a cleric of substantial level could do what the amulet could do. Um, the party then decided to rest at Tessa's and enjoy uh, a night of revelry. Um, during this time, uh, Tessora spent some time building various, uh, repairing her machines, uh, making various um, other products uh, from the engineer's pack that she carries, and Bebo went, um, or we'll pretend that Bebo went, to uh, Fizzwick's to start getting his upgrades. And that is where we will begin today, um, with the party going to sleep. I went to <laughs> went to pick up the cat to write her, and I was gonna like sh sh and her entire body just went Mlah! and she just slid right down the water slide of my my lap. Oh, all right. Anyway, wasn't that a TLC song? <laughs> don't, don't go sliding down the water slide of my lap. I, something like that. I, I vaguely remember. <laughs> Stick to the bathtubs that you're used to. Um. Anyway. This tale isn't going to be annoying at all the entire game. Okay, so uh, what I need to know is uh, what are the sleeping arrangements? I presume it's Shay and Grim have a room, and then uh, Tessora and Bebo had a room? I think we had a room before, and Grim was sleeping on the sofa. It's a very, very plush, comfy sofa. You could easily have a room with two beds, but, you know, sure, whatever you want to do. Leave the sofa. I could be thinking about it. Visit. So yeah, so I think two. I think two rooms would be better, right? Yeah, but that that's split still it now. because you. Yeah. Okay. Um. The. Sorry, she is being really, really dumb and super invasive. Can't have that. That is not for you. Get down. You mean she's being a cat? Yeah. Well, she's playing around the 3D printer, and so I need to make sure she's not going to bite anything, which is super disruptive. Anyway, um, it is night. You are tired. Uh, you have gone to sleep. Uh, Shay, I would like you to, with disadvantage, make a perception check. With disadvantage. Yes. Grim would like to roll for sweet dreams. Can't be allowed. Can't stop. Let's One. Go. Perfect. Um, that can't be good. <laughs> you start to wake up feeling chilly. Um, there is very much just a, a cold like not even like a breeze over you just you feel like the cold kind of penetrating in and it's not like ooh burr and then okay how can we solve this it's like almost feels like it's squeezing into you or clawing into you it's just getting deeper and deeper uh, and you're kind of groggily waking up and it's, it's taking a second and then all of a sudden you, you sit bolt upright as you feel the cold kind of grasp um, at like the inside of your chest um, you bolt upright breathing heavily breathing heavily and you see the room around you Grim sleeping on the other bed um, there is a candle lit its wick is fairly low um, you must have left it um, when you went to sleep it looks like it's probably been burning for a few hours you would guess you're probably past midnight one o'clock um, something like that the you can see the the window of your room um, is just a kind of a small very tiny slit because you're not in the best of rooms because you still haven't really made amends with uh, with Ortessa yet but um, you can see that there is just the barest edge of moon almost like um like a lunar eclipse but not not quite but you're all you're seeing is um just like literally like the fingernail clipping of the uh the edge of the moon and it is dark purple um 
in what you can see. Looking around the room, um, you see the, the little flame kind of flicker and sputter and get low and then kind of come back up. Um, and you see that the shadows um, are all leaning towards the fire rather than away. What do you do? Um, do I still feel that oppressive coldness on my chest? It's not squeezing in and it has relented a little bit. Now you're breathing, but it's raspy and you're having a little bit of trouble, like not physically having trouble catching it, but you're still like, it's, it's heavy, Grim, but it's not. And Grim is fine. Grim looks He's asleep. Too. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I'll try and wake him up, see if he feels the same thing. Okay, as you step out um, of the bed, your shadow shoots across the floor, elongating as if there was a bright light behind you towards the candle. Um, as it kind of approaches that end of the room... Um, the candle sputters and immediately goes out and you just see the little trail of smoke coming out of it you can still see the shadows playing on the darkness of the rest of the room just darker inky pools of blackness and they begin to move and they begin to rise and they begin to take form grab it Grim and start shaking him awake yeah. um, Grim wakes up, wake up, wake up kind of confused huh what Grim you are in a dark room Shay is over you um, I've waking, had this dream before looking, pa looking panicked and um the shadows, Grim, the shadows! You look at the opposite end of the Grim's room. trying to remember how much Shay had to drink at dinner. You see rising um, like forms of smoky shadow. Um, these kind of ghostly apparitions of smoke, essentially. Oh, um, those shadows. They coalesce into one um, one form that looks kind of like this. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, come on, camera. Anyway. Oh, it's Batman. Oh, that's not good. Um, the eyes are like whitish... Um, smoky not quite flame but like whitish smoky points that kind of trail out of this inky form and the crown looks to be a solid crown um, that has like faint purple and black flame um, trailing around it two massive claws um, or clawed hands uh, emerge and its mouth opens and from its mouth leaks out more smoke and now Grim you just feel this unnatural cold shudder into you um I look at Shay and say what did you do I just woke up what do you want <laughs> I, I yell it initiative. oh shit I knew that was coming 13 I would like to say at this point, Tessara cannot sleep with Bebo in the room. She's not in the room. Oh, okay. Bebo well, she's still, she's still uh, probably in and out of sleep, like at, at her work table or whatever. Uh, because, you know, she killed her friend. 
that's true. And that's not something you can easily live with. He's not technically dead, dead. They're, um... Yeah, they she are shot him in the face. The... That's what she remembers. <laughs> Pulled a dick, Jamie. the chest, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway. What I'm not you? entirely sure. In my head, it was the head. I got 17. Grim? 13. Okay. Um, this creature uh, is going to um, kind of roar. Um, it, it almost sounds like howling wind. Um, and all of the like cloth and drapery in in the um, the room will kind of uh, go as if you know you threw open a window and a winter storm is blowing through. Um, the its arm flies out and lashes at um, not flies out, but I mean it it reaches like its shadow arm kind of like elongates and claws out at Grim. Um, It rolls a 24 to hit, and you take 21 points of necrotic damage. Uh, should I assume at this point that I did not get the benefits of a long rest? You have full health as a f level 5 creature. Oh, good. Okay, so 21 off of full health from level 5? I can deal with that. Um, ouch, I mean, ouch. I need a uh, constitution saving throw. Ah, oh, damn it. Fifteen. Your constitu or your maximum health, po health points drop to match the amount of damage you took from it. Alright. Um, it might be a mummy! Or a mummy ghost! What's it doing here? It's going to lash out with its other arm, uh, arm at uh, Grim as well. Uh, rolls one better than it did previously. Right before it hits, I'm going to turn to Shay and go, where's that necklace? <laughs> you take... Uh, <laughs> what necklace? <laughs> th this one he rolled three ones for, so uh, you take 12 points of uh, necrotic damage, and I need you to make another uh, constitution saving throw. That con save was worse. The shadows aren't supposed to attack. So you should be down thirty-three health with your. Yeah, I'm down to a, I'm down to like max hit points of a first level cleric. <laughs> I don't know what this thing is, but this is nasty. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, which one of you rolled higher again? Shay rolled a seventeen. She did. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm sleeping, so we probably didn't have uh, armor on or anything yeah. like that. No. Um, I will. Summon my uh, my back weapon. Okay. And. Uh, when your weapon emerges, it is the same as that time at the Half Harbor Inn where the weapon you expected is not exactly what you get. It is like the evolved form, you know, the extra spikes and whatnot out of it. Um, like, the, uh, here's my sword, and then here's my sword when I go, you know, Super Saiyan. Um, it is glowing with um, dark purple and black flame. Oh, sweet. <laughs> uh, I look at it in shock. <laughs> what, what is this? And uh, I'm thinking about dropping it, but it might not be a great idea. And there's probably a lot of wood here. Um, 
And I turn back to the shadow and I said... To note, the flames on it are cold. They are not hot. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. And I hex the, the creature. Okay. And I, and I choose... Uh, there's no saving for Vex, right? Nope. Okay. All right. That's my turn. I back up a bit further against the, against the wall. Um. At this point, uh, Tesora, uh, if you would please make a perception check. I got a 12. Okay. Um, you... Something wakes you up, and you... You're kind of looking around for a second, because there's nothing happening, and then you hear um, a bit of a commotion from um, the, the uh, from their room, from Shay's room. Um, it... It sounds like some shouting back and forth. Um, you definitely, uh, after a moment, hear a uh, sounds of uh, a little bit of pain from. It sounds like something hurt in Grim. He makes that familiar puppy whimper that he <laughs> makes when he gets hit. What, what are you going to do? Oh, um, I will make sure to uh, load my uh, gun and then sneak to their door. Okay. You sneak towards their uh, door and you can hear um, them uh, them having uh, the same conversation that they, they just had, whatever Shade just said. You, you hear the tail end of that. Um, all right, uh, Grim, it is your turn. Since I have all of my health, do I have all of my spell slots too? Uh, yes. Uh, sweet. Uh, just to make things quick and easy, I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians and then Shield of Faith on Shay. So you get a plus two AC. You can't cast both the same turn. One's a bonus action. Neither is a cantrip. Oh, damn it. That's right. Okay, just Spirit Guardians then this turn. Okay. Is, is the Spirit Guardians, is that the one with the large area of effect that... Uh, yes. Yep. Damage? Aren't we like... Aren't we like in a... Uh... It doesn't harm you. Yeah. I, no. I can, tell it, I can tell it not to harm you. Yeah, but aren't we like in a hotel thing? Yeah, we're in a room. Basically, the entire room is covered in Spirit oh. Guardians now. Okay, I thought it would be bigger. Uh, Grim summons his. It's it's a fifteen foot cube, um, radius. It's a fifteen foot radius centered on him, um, and he can designate any creatures to not be harmed by it. So he could just say anyone in the inn um, who's staying, as opposed to this creature. Um, when you summon anyone, it, not that. Yeah. So you go and you do um, your uh, your quick prayer. You summon forth the radiant celestial beings. Instead, erupting from the ground are these purple and black flamed um, spectral ghost things. They don't look like this other creature. They don't look as menacing and black. They look more like haunted. Um, They're not the angels I expected. They are not. Um, I would like the both of you to make dexterity saving throws. Dirty 20. Uh, 17. And actually, uh, Tesora, if you would as well. You're within this. Uh, deck save? Yes, please. Uh, 19. What did you, uh, get, uh, Lex? 17. Okay. Alright, um... Grim and uh, Tesora, you both take seven uh, necrotic damage. 
Uh, Shay, you take 14. Um, and the spell immediately ends, and you, you no longer feel any of the magic in the spell. The spectral images do not go away. There are now four more enemies in the room. The one at the door, Tessora, grabs you. Uh, like it emerges through the door, and all of a sudden, this green, uh, purple uh, and black, like fiery face, just emerges from the door, grabs you by the throat, clawing into you, and pulls you in, battering the door inward. And so, basically, just imagine like being pulled through a um, a room's wooden door, and the door slams into the ground. You stumble into the room, and now you see these. Uh, there's the one that just pulled you in, and three more, and then the um, the keenly looking one. Um, and it's completely dark in the room. And then, and the it, it is dark, yes, but you can see everything pretty perfectly. Well, I, I, outside of just like dark vision, it's, it's weird. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, that is mm -hmm. Grim's turn. So all three of you have gone now. Uh, so it is the, uh, for lack of a better word, the, the Wraith's turn. Um, the Wraith is going to disappear in like a, of the, the kind of the black flame, all the purple disappears. Um, sorry, I'm looking for my face. Um, Grim, all of a sudden, a um, you just feel a cold in your um, your back, and the rest of you see a clawed hand, uh, like just basically pop through Grim's chest. Um, it has basically just reached through you, like clawed through the back. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Um, you can no longer feel your bottom half. All you feel is this cold, like intense burning. Um, you that cannot be good. Nope, that's not the right place. <laughs> Shay screams. <laughs> this is not how I saw the episode starting. <laughs> you take twenty-three points of necrotic damage. Uh, we have a cleric down. Grim's body falls to the ground. Actually, wait a minute. 23 points? Yes. That's enough to kill me. It, no, it isn't. Well, uh, I mean... Also, it's close based on my other hit points. What's your max hit points with what he has done to you so far? No, nine more to kill me. Okay. 13 was my max. Okay, and remember that resets. It has to be from each attack. Uh, that being said... Grim's body falls to the ground, and it's it's like a um, an insect shedding its skin. You see a ghostly, like light-colored version of of Grim, just kind of still standing there with this arm that has reached through it. And then, as Grim's body hard hits the floor, the I'm a forest ghost puppet. The forest ghost puppet um, turns purplish, black, smoky, and. Grim's features start to fade and fade until he looks exactly like the other specters in the room. Grim. Grim is dead. I take it the ones from my specter. spirit. The spirit guardians are they still around, or yes. did my spell dissipate no. since the spell I spell dissipated? They are still there. The spell dissipated immediately Ooh. after. Um. So. Shit. It is the Spectre's turn now. Um, they are all going to descend upon uh, Tessora and just whip past you with these cold claws. Um, two of them rolled well over 20, and the other two rolled under a 14. Yeah, with no armor, uh, uh, they all hit. Oh, that's true. I did forget about the uh, Whoops, 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 whoops. Knocking shit over. You take... Okay. 
It's enough dice, Jason. <laughs> Please stop rolling. You take oh my God. 30 necrotic damage, and I need oh, you to make all? it. And you need to make a constitution saving throw. <clears throat> I'm really good at this. I got a six. Your max health is reduced by 30. I'm dead. Dead, dead. Oh, you were dead, dead anyway. Um, the, as they whip past, they just basically, like, you just see sort of, like, reeling as the claws go through. It's just, like, purpley black fire instead of blood trailing out. And then after the fourth one passes, um, her body falls, and the um, the force, the spirit ghost stays, and is kind of like ripped into, um, you know, ripped from the body, and starts to turn purple black, and the features start to fade and it elongates into just looking like the rest of the specters, as opposed to this this dwarf woman. Um, Tesora, you bastards! <laughs> I thought you were going to Sora, bastard. Tesora, you bastard! What? Um, okay. Um, Shay, it's your turn. Uh, run. <laughs> In a room filled with with, with specters and such. Now. Um... Uh, is the raid still close by to me? Uh, he's across the room. The specters are kind of flitting around. I think uh, I'm going to use my Hexblade curse on him. Okay. And I'm with a, a, a grip my sword with two hands. And with a, a scream, ah, I'm going to charge him. To swing at him. Okay. That's a plus six. Is there sixteen to hit? Oh, I forgot he did teleport behind Grim. So yes, he was right next to you. I'm sorry. Okay. Wait, what hits? The first attack was a what did I say? Fifteen? Fifteen or sixteen? 16, yeah. It does not. It does not. Okay. And the second attack is an 18. Okay. As Big you um, bring your sword down, or uh, glaive, is it out as a glaive right now? No, I uh, I have to reach us the, the demon's tongue, right? So it's now a long sword. Well, I mean, it can be whatever weapon you want. It would just yeah. be more badass than whatever it had been before. Um, visually. It's, a, it's, it's a cosmetic upgrade, not available except through DLC. Um, <laughs> the, um, the Wraith catches the blade and shatters it. And you feel cold shoot up your arm. Like, for all effects and purposes, you, you think that arm is... I'm never going to be used that arm again. It's gone. Because it just... The pain from the cold is so intense, followed by complete numbness. Um, we all fight for the Night King now. It's where the real campaign happens. Um, I guess I back up further, as far as I can, clutching my arm. He at least I try. The, he grabs you by the neck and starts to squeeze. And, squeeze. and you can't help it. A scream is just coming out, and it just gets choked off. Then you bolt upright in bed, screaming, cold sweat. You feel a hand at your, your chest and shoulder. Um, but it's warm, and you see the obsidian-skinned face of Tessa looking down at you, just saying, repeating, you're okay, you're okay, it's fine, you're okay. Grim, you wake up in the room now, too, because you're looking over, and uh, Shay has bolted upright. She is screaming, that's what woke you up, but weirdly... Ortessa is in the room. She's holding a candle. She's le leaning down at the bed, trying to comfort Shay. That's weird. And Tessora, um, whether you were up or not at 1 a.m., um, you hear Shay scream. Like, they all died. 
We all died. What what happened? Um, Tessora will. She just kind of like is is. She looks worried, but she's kind of like half smiling, like re trying to reassure you. She said you, you were having a nightmare, and you started screaming. Shadows don't behave like this. Shadows don't behave like this. Shadows don't behave like this. And do, do I remember the nightmare? No. That didn't happen to you. At all. I'm really tired. I'm going to put that card away. What, what's going on? What was that? That was no nightmare. No more mutton stew before dinner, or before bed, I think. Just copious amount of alcohol. There was uh, too much pepper in it. It probably just upset your bodily humors. Mm -hmm. Either that or you're under psychic attack from some as-of-yet-unknown entity. So let's go with bad gap. <laughs> Tessa will um, kind of look over at Grim a little bit, and then she'll lean into you close, uh, Shay, and she'll say, um, that's not the first time that shadows have behaved like that near you, have they? You've seen it before. Yeah, but not like that. Not like this. She kind of looks at you and looks at your, your, um, your, is Shay right-handed? Yes. So dominant hand. You have, um... You look down to where her hand is, and she's looking at it, and she says, Is this new? And you have what looks like a purpley-black tattoo of a skull, um, let's look right here, a skull, um, that's purple and black flames around it, and, like, black wings. And it goes, um, like, from here to like here like along your collarbone um and uh like upper pectoral uh it's not in, it's not insubstantial and as you're looking at it you're like i didn't get that it starts to fade and fade and fade until the purple skull vanishes i pound on the door is everything okay <laughs> <laughs> Shay screams again. Ah! Tessa's hand. I can't. Have other guests. I. <laughs> I cock the gun and kick at the door. The, the, sorry, the door is open. Um, I, oh, should, I should okay. say because Tessa, Tessa let herself in and. Okay. Um. So the doors are enchanted, to only let people with the keys in. And so you guys have your two keys for your room. And apparently Tessa has um, the ability to get into rooms as well. So when she heard the screaming, she came in and would have let herself in. So I come in through the door with the gun out. What's going on? Are you okay? <laughs> I tried to cover up my, my, my shoulder a bit. Blanket. They do not <laughs> see it. They're not close enough to see... So even as Grim kind of like approaches behind uh, Tessa, um, it has faded by that point, by the time he gets there. No, I, I still cover, cover up my shoulder. Well, fair. <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> Out of curiosity, <laughs> when you sleep, what happens? Because I did not think about this until now. What happens to the illusion you keep in place during the day? That is a good question. I you assume that... I did not think about it until just now. Uh, I assume it stays up. I don't know the time limit. It has no, no time limit. It also, I believe... Well, it might be, I don't know. What, what's the... Does it give you the access to a spell, or...? No, it's uh, it's an invocation. I'll have a yeah. Also, sure the wording of the, uh, the spell or of the invocation. Okay, so yeah, you're all in the room. You see, you see, yeah, see Shay 
lit by the candle in Ortessa's hand. The there's no other lights in the room. Um, there is a uh, you can't really see anything through the window. Um, it's a fairly dim night. There might be um, a moon, but you can't see it from here, and you you know that's true anyway. It would be on the other side of the building at this point. All right, I guess it it fades after an hour. I just constantly recast it on myself. Oh. But if I sleep, then I can't, so I guess I have to sleep. All right. Sleep. Would you like to describe for the party uh, what they see when you wake up? Uh, yeah, sure. Sorry, I didn't I didn't mean for this to happen. I completely forgot about it until literally this Yeah, time. me too. Um, yes, yes. Um, uh, I know. Uh, a bit sand colored hair and a sand colored skin with a bit of a greenish tint to it. She has a long nose with the ridge going all the way, very much more pronounced. The gun straight, uh, big yellow eyes, and there are scales a bit glistening around the cheeks going down, and there are patches over her body as far as you can see it's a very a bit elongated face narrow and uh, pointy ears at least you have ears that's nice you got that going for you right yeah. well i mean i'm yeah um she has a very oh and she has no hair on her face So no eyebrows. Usually. Oh, no eyebrows. I was like, did she have hair before? <laughs> I was, I was very confused gone. by that. Yeah, you don't think about it, but it's really, that's why I made the point of pointing that out. Yeah. No eyebrows, no eyelashes. Almost like that a Whoopi Goldberg a, thing happening. Slightly thicker ridge. Uh, very uh, reptilian, uh, like, it reminds you of a snake. Yeah. Snake. I imagine it's gonna freak Grim out just a little bit. <laughs> like, I mean, take a step back, probably make a little chirping noise. Because anytime you wonder what the up, fuck just happened to Shay. If you've ever woken her up from like, um, for uh, guard duty or whatever, um, she's probably had time to re up it, uh, thinking about it. This time, she didn't necessarily think about it. Yeah, not after the nightmare. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do I have minor panic of what she is? Give me a um history check, I guess. Ooh, nice. Uh, seventeen. Nope. You. Um, I mean, you know about like Dragonborn and other peoples that have you know more reptilian features. Um, she doesn't really look like anyone of that, um, of that like bloodline. Um, but you're not really sure. You, you offhand don't immediately associate her with anything. Like, you're not like, oh yeah, hey, Wanty Empire, and then here's a Wanty or anything like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. They're not super big uh, in this part of the world. Well, well, does it look anything like Shay? Yeah. Resembles. Yeah. Like, you can see her in there. It's that just, might freak Grim out even more. Like tweaks. What are you doing? I'm going to, you know, like, uncock my gun, or whatever it's called, and, uh... Doesn't do it for you anymore? <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> and say, um... Um... Odd, but, uh, it's too late to talk about this now. I need a drink, and I'm going to turn with a flourish in my Ebenezer Scrooge 
uh, nightgown. And, uh, <laughs> With the hat? Yeah. Well, it's probably, I don't know how hot it is. Like you said, it was spring going to summer it's, or something uh, like that. It's April? It's the same time in Europe. Oh, oh though. yeah. I mean, it's 90 degrees in my house right now. So yeah, but that's hot. Florida. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's probably like uh, low 60s. Okay. Yeah, I'm still wearing the hat then. And uh, I'm going to just... I don't have a holster for my gun, so I'll just hold it. But I'm going down to the bar. Um, Mortessa will uh, say to you as you leave, because um, you you announced that you needed a drink, right? Was that out Not loud? really. Was it, I just uh, said that this is too much for this late at night. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Um, so Tessora leaves, heads downstairs. Me, heads downstairs. Um, what, um, what goes on with the rest of you? Grim watches them leave like they aren't freaked out at all, and he just looks at Shay and says, Are you all right? No, I probably had to, one of the worst nights in my life. Are you okay? You were actually having a pretty good dream. Um, you were talking uh, to Galana, or Galana was talking to you. And she was telling you um, that you have been doing well. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. And he still doesn't, he's not quite ready to come any closer. <laughs> you sure you're okay? You, uh, there's some kind of magic thing? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Could, could you maybe light a few more candles? That's not, not too much of a bother. Holding the blanket. Um, Grim, Grim sets around and lights every candle in the room. There's another two. Little, he lights um, both more candles in the room. <laughs> and um, so it's, it's Thank kind you. of a, 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 a nice homey glow in here. Um, is there a place to light a fire? There is not, not on the room, no. Kind of a back out of the way room with basically two nice cots in it. Just sort of take my blanket and put it around Shay's shoulders, but still like not understanding what's going on, not understanding the way she looks or what's happening in any way. Are you sure you can? What are you? Is there something on my face? And I look like shit. <laughs> and I cast the, this guy's self again. <laughs> Grim doesn't even know how to answer that. He just goes, ah. And immediately, like, this, um, kind of like, probably black flame, just like, barely perceptible, just passes over her features and leaving behind, um, that kind of like shadowy magic is, uh, Che. I, I may have been having a bad dream, too. Yeah. Yeah. M maybe you should just go back to sleep. You sure you're tired? I don't know. Tesora may have had the right idea with a good stiff drink at this point. Well, uh, I don't Tessa, want to be alone here. <laughs> Tessa will say... Um, well, if you would like, we can go downstairs and I will, I will get us a bottle of wine. Why don't you come downstairs, Shay? Let's let's have a drink and talk about the dream. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do it out. So, Grim, you go ahead and head downstairs. Yeah. Okay. Shay, as you get out of bed and um, kind of like uh, address yourself and you know, throw on um, whatever more clothing uh, you want. Um, Tessa will just kind of be sitting on the edge of Grimm's bed um, with a little candle holder in her lap um, and she'll say um, I have known since I first saw you that you were touched by my plane by the fires of my homeworld 
but it appears that perhaps that touch has gotten stronger with you. As you rise in power, so does it. What do you mean? What play? Um, she says, uh, my people come from the world of shadows. It's loud. Sorry. Okay. The shadow realm. So you know what this is, then? I am not unfamiliar with things like it. But whatever connects you to that power is not known to me. Is there at least a way I can sleep without these nightmares? That I do not know, but I imagine that the stronger you are, the more that you harness your power and learn to control it and learn about its control on you, the better it will be. But can I control it? If is there something if there's something having an influence on me? How do I know what it is and what it wants? She says, um, that may not always be the easiest of things to deal with. These... I do not know what the source of your power is. I do not know if you have made a deal with a power in my realm, or if your bloodline leads back to my realm and that is the source of your power and magic but whatever gives you your abilities has a message for you and is trying to draw out your power Should I be worried? In my experience, even coming from where I do and the dangers that are inherently there, here, dreams cannot hurt you. I think I would like that drink now. She claps both hands down on her legs and grabs the little candle and says, All right, let's go. And she heads downstairs and she uh, will get a bottle of nice wine for everyone and pour drinks um, until the bottle is gone. Uh, and unless anyone specifically talks about anything else, she will turn the conversation to the festival and what you guys plan to do over the next few days, um, what you've done so far. Um, she'll ask you if you had any luck uh, on Minerva's quest and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Just plan to work on my machines for the next couple of days and then Hopefully get another job or move on to the next city. She says, "That's a, there's definitely plenty of work to be done here for sure, um, between Badger's needs and Minerva perhaps needing couriers and gods only know what Fiswick is up to, other than I think a strong interest in your friend." Um, the she says, I think even Gren, uh, during this time of year, would uh, potentially have work for 
uh, adventurers of your of your of your type. Gren. Uh, Gren. She says, uh, Young Gren, the owner of Gren's Goods. Okay. Well, perhaps not him himself, but you know the company. They would. They hire caravan guards and whatnot. Uh, that might be below you at this point, but it's not a bad way to get from place to place. You never know. He may have other work that needs to be done. What I find is uh, that keeps me here in this town as opposed to going to a larger city. Not only because I can afford to be fancier here, as you can see. Um, there is never a dearth of adventures and jobs to be had. There's always something going on. Yeah. That and it's far easier to get good wine here. From many places. She shakes the bottle and says, This is Olaria's finest. Hard to get. It is actually like the best wine you've ever had. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't really have anything more to say. It's okay to just I... to say, okay, that's the end of this. Okay. Is Shay feeling better? Slightly calmed down. Still mulling things over, so she's a bit quiet. Maybe we just need to finish a good night's sleep, and tomorrow everything will be better. It's worth a try. No more demon dream sequences. I'll try. <laughs> Thank you for the wine. And for the advice. She tips the cup to you and nods. I'll try not to wake up everybody else in the building for the rest of the night. She says, well, luckily I was walking past your rooms anyway to get some linens from the closet and happened to hear you when you'd started, knew something was wrong, and I think... Can I make an insight check on that? You can. Oh, snap. I got a 19. Yeah, she was getting linens from the linen closet. The rooms All are right. in, uh, right. in a back corner uh, where the servants are. Okay. I, George, don't wholly trust or test. <laughs> Obviously, she comes from shadow places. We just don't know that yet. I, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned that when she was introduced. I, yeah, I've said it before, but whether or not your people know that versus... Uh, uh, I don't, I don't think some I don't think Grim has overheard it. You would have to know where, you know, the obsidian-skinned elves are from. That's... Yeah, I think uh, Matrix made the test, but whatever. Um... Yeah, I think uh, it's bedtime for me, or for Tesora. Okay. Everyone else as well? Grim too. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, before we go to sleep, though, I am going to grab Grim's uh, arm and whisper, you need to keep the blade close while you're in that room with her. Oh, wow. Already on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you go to bed. Uh, Grim, you return slightly to... Uh, kind of a peaceful repose and it's just you know kind of a darkness with a voice coming up but it's a, it's a warmth um, and as the, the voice kind of sounds out there's like little panes of light and like almost like ripples of water going off and it's um, Galana talking to you again and she says I wasn't finished before you woke up it's very rude to just walk away in the middle of a lesson but my entire point was 
you've done well, and you should call, you know, for my help more often. So, rather than once, I'll give you twice. And then you wake up and it's morning. Because Galana's lessons take forever, even though they seem very short. Um, so you Galana, need to call your mom. You need to call your mom more often. She worries about you. <laughs> um, so yay, you can cast Channel Divinity twice now as a level six or whatever. Whatever you get, I don't know. Um, Alrighty. Uh, I'm seeing. I'm seeing every ridiculous call me maybe meme from like two years ago. All right, so you wake up. It's morning. <laughs> um, Bebo is going to be in the shop for seven days. Um, you were told. So you have seven days to kill or be killed. Seven days to kill. And that is where we will take our first break. Alright, so you wake up in the morning. The general buzz of kind of breakfasty time is um, happening downstairs. You wake up a little bit earlier um, than kind of the, the busy, uh, busy breakfast time. But um, for the most part, ready to, uh, to go. Grim, you are level six with everything that that means. Uh, Tessora, after working on all your stuff, you are level six and all that means. Bebo needs seven days to become level six. Uh, so um, he's upgraded. he's five point one right now. Yeah, he's being upgraded. If you stand outside Fiswick's shop, you're going to hear a lot of uh, explosions and springs, and well, there's lots of smoke. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, was I able to finish the other walker that night? Working on it? Uh, you finished the tiny walker while yeah. they were exploring town. So if you... What is the wording for the machinist, the machine walker? I'm pretty sure... Uh, let's see. Mechanical walker. If the walker is damaged, will not destroy okay. If the walker is destroyed, you may create another one. Come during a long rest. Uh, yes. Yeah, you, you made one. Okay. I have to roll a check to repair it, I believe. Uh, to repair it, yes. Not to make it. Yeah. Oh, not to make a new one? Uh -huh. Okay. Alright. Yeah, I gotta go, uh... Like, how do you, how should we place supplying my engineer pack? Like, it automatically has it, or should I go and re-up it every once in a while it at least? does not cost you anything to supply the uh, engineer's pack with stuff needed. Okay. Um, you can just be like, all right, I also find a, a, you know, a gadget shop where I can, it's like in town, you can just go to Fizzwick's and get stuff. So you can have it be part of your thing. You can not do it. It's, it is understood that it gets supplied. If you need any special materials, that is different. Same as components. Okay. All right. Well, I've got... Uh... Well, while we're at breakfast, I'll inform them that uh, I have about one more day on working on stuff. Um, I don't know what either of your plans are. I would like to stop in with Fizzwick and see how... The upgrades to Bebo are going. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just going to be working on machines all day. Okay, that's going to take you most of the day? Yeah. Should be about 14 hours of work. Okay. I have no what particular do do desire. Here? I have no particular desire to look in at uh, Bebo. Uh, I don't know what Etiquette here is. Is it like walking into a changing room or something? At least. 
it's it's rude to look before the upgrades are done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is the, is the festival still going on? It is. Uh, that could be fun. Um, okay. We still have to talk to uh, Badger, of course. Um, I also had. Were you able to make any money? Yesterday, while you were in town, I wasn't with, you know, Tassar wasn't with either of you or any of y'all when you went to talk about quests, completing quests and whatnot. I don't think we turned anything over to anybody yet, did we? We haven't seen Badger. No, we have not actually uh, okay. uh, finished up our business yet. Okay. I just want, you know, I have very little money. I'm going to spend every gold today on working on this stuff. I suppose we should go see him, eventually. Yeah. We could do that today. I mean, we will ju even if you're not uh, present uh, the Sora, we can just give you share your share when we meet up later. Sure. If that's okay with you. Well, I mean, if... If Bebo is going to be in town for a week, essentially, Getting this upgrade, we I don't have to rush this in one day. We can take I can take more time and spread it out. I'm not okay. I'm not bad at negotiating, I'm just not great at it, yeah. So what are you doing? Um then shall we go to Badger first? That frees us up for uh, frees us up to do whatever we want afterwards. Sounds good. Yeah. And then a candied apple at the festival. Ooh. This is a great. Been bit. thinking about one since I woke up. I don't know why. This is a great bit when they first get to the capital, the big city, in uh, the chain, where one of the characters who's never been like anywhere uh, with a lot of people. <laughs> tries candy apples and like sausage on a stick with like mustard and he hates both of them and then he takes the sausage and puts it in like the caramel and it's like this is the greatest thing ever and he was just doing it on rolls like a tenor better was liked or whatever it was really funny uh okay so you're going to uh badger 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 what do we have for him again Besides I don't the know. Pendant, I don't take notes. the dragon pendant. I'm not a player. Um, <laughs> he's the one that hired Fine. us to get Fine. rid of the gnolls. Yeah. Uh, to hunt the gnolls. No and to bring him back the uh, the crap we found. Everyone wants that amulet. And yeah. He is the amulet has is... one potential <laughs> offer for the amulet. He gave you a quest to go destroy the dark shrine. And wasn't um, there like a signet ring or something we were supposed to bring back that we found a ring and a... Yeah, I, I don't know if y'all ever turned that quest in, but it was the stuff of the Daxian Empire. Yeah. Have you not Am turned Am I thinking too in? far back? Did we already turn that in? I think so. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. I'm pretty sure we cool. turned that in. Then all guys, we have is the pendant. You guys have a lot of money, so I would hope that you've turned in some of this stuff. I don't... I mean... Eh, you're not part you of that. You 40 yeah. gold. Okay. <laughs> Whatever they want to treat you as party The funds. party like, gold. I think the party has like a thousand gold or something like that. Close. Really? Yeah. Okay, you have a lot. I'm going over the quest right now. So I don't have the badge. 982. Right yeah. Wow. Yeah, y'all must have took, turned that quest in. I, right? I, I, I know you did. Yeah. yeah, we must have. Okay, I don't have that marked off. Um... So do we take him this pendant, amulet, dragon thing? Did you? Oh shoot! Did you? Are find we out sure what it this is not the source does? of the bad dreams? Shay, I mean, you can't necessarily be certain, but there was nothing in it that seemed similar. Yeah, it didn't come up in my dreams, at least. Your dream might have been triggered by having dealt with, you know, the dark magics and whatnot, but. Mm. And it's, the, the, it's not that like I don't want to get rid of it, but who are we going to give it to? Yeah, I don't. We don't even know what it is, really, right? 
Uh, Other than supposedly that, a cleric can use it for something? You know that it has some sort of power uh, and control of Earth. And Minerva suggested that it was not something outside of the realm of things you would be able to do or someone like you would be able to do eventually. Like you would be able mm. to learn to do the same things it does. Interesting. As opposed to like a... Um, well, I mean, she didn't say a wizard couldn't, but the implication might be that it, it has some sort of divine magic or instead of arcane, perhaps. But you're not sure. She's weird. Mm. Speaks weirdly. I'm still in favor of... I'm still in favor of turning it into the... Giving it to uh, the innkeepster to patch up uh, our relations. It is the nicest place in town, and I would like to not spend my nights in a barn, if at all possible. Well, you're kind of in like the uh, like the behind the curtain, like almost like servants' quarters. They're still nice rooms; they're just not like plush. You actually kind of get the impression, especially after last night, that she is not as angry as she she could be. She any harboring of keeping you at arm's length is a business move at best and for show at best, but not even like much of that. I mean she shared what you expect was probably a pretty significantly expensive bottle of wine with you last night. Hmm. So I don't have... We did clear the knolls still for Badger, so we can go see him and yeah, drop the necklace. I don't have that much he offered with him. I didn't make note of the gold. I, I, I know, it's fine. Okay. But thank you. But yeah, um, I don't think we have any other quests to turn in unless... And except for the Jade Amulet, we need to find out what we're going to do with that. Jade Amulet, decide on that. You have one other quest to turn in, which is the Dark Shrine. They are not the same quest. Um, oh, the gnolls and the dark shrine are the same quest? The dark shrine is the gnolls, but that has nothing to do with... Oh, okay, I didn't know. It has nothing to do okay. with the brass temple. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The amulet is uh, its own thing. The gnolls and the dark shrine is another thing. Yep. And whatever you want to tell him about other things. So should we give the amulet to Tesora and then go tell uh, Badger that we killed all the gnolls? I believe that we should wait for the amulet uh, until after Badger to find out maybe perhaps what he wants with it, anything more about it, anything like that. <coughs> yeah, I can be a favor of that. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so, so we're off to see the Badger. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you go to the uh, the CD Tavern at the edge of town, uh, or at the back wall um the tavern is fairly empty at this time of day um it's like 8 a.m um it's still pretty dim in here uh light wise uh but there is some morning light being cast through um the dirty window but you're also in the shadow of the wall you're in the shadow of the buildings across the street. Okay. Um, sorry. It's that east-west thing again. Super pesky. Um, so it's it's a cool light, but it's still very dim in here. Um, what you do see in here are... Um, you don't see, like, the goblins that you saw the other day. You don't see um, Grimgall or Osia who you maybe haven't met yet. Um, I don't remember if you've met Osia. I think you've just met Grimgall. Um, met Grimgall. Grimgall. The, uh, you see a couple... Um, it, it's, the bulk of people in here are kind of like... Um, if you just want to kind of like picture like rangers or rogue, that, that, like if you just wanted to populate it, that's kind of what most of these people look like. Um, it's kind of classic leathers, darker things, cloaks... Um, bows and knives that that kind of stuff um every once in a while you get a you get a more armored person in here uh and actually today there is a table of um 
of four people that uh kind of something you haven't seen in, in, a, in a while it looks like the other adventuring party you know um there's a uh a woman with uh black braided hair in uh in plate armor um fairly shiny uh there's um sitting with them is a, a white dragonborn which it, there's a chance that none of you have ever seen a white dragonborn before uh dragonborn in general are uh fairly rare um she is uh fairly um like slight of build uh much less bulky than dragonborn that you've seen uh at least in this campaign you've mostly only seen male dragonborns uh and even madrax was uh like wiry built because madrax was fairly slight not he wasn't uh he wasn't like hulking was he he was fairly strong oh he was pretty big yeah okay so yeah, never, yeah. never mind um yeah so she is she is very slight compared to that very much uh like lithe what she's wearing like um traveling clothes they're they're nice they have some color to them um there's a human man at the table um who's kind of got like his boots kicked up on a on a, a neighboring chair um he kind of looks uh rangery but he looks uh, a little bit more put together than some of the other um people like you know you have your dirty woodsman and then you have eric right uh but he's got like cornstalk uh hair and he's um He's kind of smiling and chuckling along with whatever they're talking about. Uh, and then the fourth person at that table is a another human male. Um, and he looks kind of um, burly, uh, but he also looks a little bit more unkempt. He's got this uh, red hair and braids. Uh, he's got... Uh, it's fairly long. Uh, he's got kind of a woodsy clothes feel to him. Um, looks kind of like a ranger or... Uh, Maybe druidish kind of stuff things are in his hair you know like you branches braided off into his into his hair um and they seem to be uh talking about something um you're not really sure from here but they're the only point of like liveliness in the place the others you know like it's the quiet drinking or a couple people just kind of like waiting around or whatever um, if the woman with the braids and the shiny armor looks at me i give her a what's up nod the moment you walk in, she surveys, um, and looks, and when you kind of nod at her, she kind of, like, looks you over, and, uh, kind of just returns the, you know, welcome to the bar, look, uh, you don't read anything more into that, um, or you don't get the impression that there's anything more to that, but, um, it's just a, oh, someone nodded at me, so... Uh, the walking past each other on the street, you know, like, what's up? Um, the, uh, yeah, so they're talking at the table. You do see Barkeep. Um, he is, uh, looking at what looks like a, um, like a thick sheet of, uh, like folded paper, uh, almost like a one page, uh, newspaper. You don't see Badger. Yeah. Do either of you want to take the lead? To look for Badger? Yeah. You do know from experience that Badger is usually... There is a, like, weird staircase kind of in the corner that, like, doesn't look su as supported as it should be. Uh, it's not up to code is what I'm saying. Uh, and he has an office up there, or living quarters, or there's an inn. God only knows what happens in this place. It's very confusing. Or all three. Uh, should we just go up and see if he's home? Let's just head up the stairs and see if he's home. That seems rude. You should we just go to the bar? People, yeah, people we'll talk to barkeep first. usually. We could knock. Yeah, I'm afraid we're gonna offend someone in the place if we just try and walk upstairs. It might be uh, employees only. Maybe yeah, he'll see us if we just sit at the bar and wait. Well, we can ask Barky yeah. to fetch him. I'm going to. Maybe they've uh... got some good food. Don't, no, don't forget to yourself. <laughs> That'll put two characters out of commission for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you doing? 
Here, let me let me do this. Do Shay, what are you doing? I'm gonna do the bar. Grim, what are you I'm doing? Done. Following Shay. Tesor, sorry. I I just realized you guys can't tell where I'm pointing and looking. <laughs> sorry. Tesor, what are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna go up to the bar. Does it look like that group of adventurers is drinking anything, eating anything? They do have a, uh, each a mug of ale. Um, you imagine that if it's anything like your first experiences here, they took one yeah. sip and then are just sitting holding the mugs because that's what you do. <laughs> okay. Um, if you look, as you kind of walk up, if you look out of the corner of your eye, you do see the man with the cornstalk hair, uh, kind of the smiling man. Uh, he's holding the... Um, He's kind of in a relaxed pose. He's holding the his mug on the table, but he's got a he every once in a while reaches down, kind of one handed, undoes a flask, takes a sip, and then does it back, and puts it in. Um the uh he's not like trying to hide it super, but it's just like a You can tell he he is a dexterous so he he has some you've seen, you know, rogues and whatnot who can palm things. He has kind of that skill set, it looks like. Um, and the only reason I call them at another adventuring party is it's just for that... Co um, like usually, it's like two woodsmen, or like, these two people look like they go together, and they go out and... This looks like four people who came together to do similar things to what you're doing. Um, anyway. Uh, barkeep um, doesn't <laughs> look out from his paper. He just holds his paper. So he's... Uh, just behind us. Uh, hi. Uh, what are you reading there? News. About? Grinsmont. What's going on in Grinsmont? There's a festival. Real nice. <laughs> Lots of people. Good for business. Some businesses. <laughs> what do you need? You get inspiration. <laughs> Barkeep might be one of my favorite characters. <laughs> For no reason. He's awful. <laughs> the worst. Um, he'll uh, he'll kind of look and he's like, Oh, it's you guys. Well, not going to get any reading done. Puts it away. What can I do for you? Looking for Badger? Oh, of course. Of course. Badger! He just yells out. Uh, all four of the people at the over the table look. Like, this is the first time this has happened. Uh, they're also very confused because they probably had a very, you know, normal interaction with, with Barkeep earlier. Uh, no one else in the bar is looking around. Uh, you surmise this is probably Adventuring Party's first day here. Um... <laughs> Barkeep waits a minute and then gets ready to use and then there is a loud like boom 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 on the floor uh, and Barkeep kind of takes his paper back he'll be down in a minute <laughs> um, alright if we have a minute, I'm going to mosey on over to the uh, other adventuring group. Okay. Uh, every once in a while, you hear like a like a skitter and a thud from upstairs. Um, there's a good chance there's a tiny halfling getting ready for the day in a hurry. <laughs> um, as you approach the other party, um, the kind of big burly man. Who, whose head almost appears to emerge from his chest in just the way that his like big red hair and like puffed up cloak is around him. Um, he's kind of he's eyeing you the most suspiciously of the group in like the oh someone's coming what do they need? Um, the kind of roguish guy is giving you kind of the there they go someone's approaching this hasn't happened yet um, oh. and he'll kind of tap the uh, the armored woman next next to him. Um, and she'll look and, and he'll kind of nod towards you. And she looks up and um, she kind of writes herself uh, in her armor and puts on the kind of that, that oh, we're going to talk to people now. And the white dragonborn um, 
turns. So the two women kind of had their backs to you. Um, and the two men were kind of facing you a little bit more. Um, and the the dragonborn turns her, her head. And she has kind of um, those like quill frills pulled back into like, oh, not a braid, but like more like a ponytail. And they're, they're bound with some sort of cloth. Um, in the way that like the dragonborn in the book have like dread like dreadlock kind of bits, um, and she uh, she looks at you and she has like uh, she's super smiley, um, and she's like, oh yes, hello, more people. This place has been quite uh, quite quiet so kind far. Right. Yeah, I go for that super casual lean on the chair kind of thing, the back of the chair. So know. tempted to have to, have to make the, the a clothes. check for the chair not to break. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm, I'm right. Hi, I'm Tessor Saffridge. Y'all new to town? Oh, yes, Miss Saffridge. We just arrived yesterday. Yeah? We thought we'd try a little uh, bit of the local color and uh, try a, one of the uh, the taverns of Grensmont. Oh, well, if you really want to try a tavern, you should go to Ortessa's. Ortessa's tap room? We saw it on the way in, but... Um, we decided to explore a little bit first. Mm. I thought uh, when you want a decent drink and a good meal, you should go there. They're not wrong. You hear from the bar? <laughs> God damn bartender! <laughs> <clears throat> that guy's gonna kill me this game. Um. Uh. Nah, yeah. Um. So you are you adventurers? They kind of look around the party or, or around each other, and um. She says, yes, I, I suppose you could say that. Um, I'm Ersi. And she holds out one um, clawed hand to you. I'll take it and gently shake it. Because, you know, I don't know how to do that. I'm used to, like, fist bumps yeah. and high fives as a, as a street urchin. She she seems um, really put together, kind of posh, um, for lack of a better word. Um, very, um, very... F uh, femme uh in her uh, uh dress and portrayal um not road weary adventure like she looks like she kind of took some effort to put herself together this morning um and that's the that's the gerardi yes yeah okay ursa right uh ersi ersi sorry yeah. posh spice yeah <laughs> um she said these are my companions. Um, this is Ildra. And she gestures to the um, the woman in the plate armor. Um, okay, she kind of nods. Um, and she says, this is Adrian. Um, and the uh, the ranger-looking man. Um, and gives a little salute. And then um, and he's also takes it, he takes his legs off of the other chair and kind of sits normally at the table. Um... And then uh, she says, and our good friend Harin. And the uh, man with the ruddy hair uh, just kind of. Uh, hello. What was his name? I'm sorry, Harin? Harin. Or Harin. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, it's, uh, it's nice to meet you all. I'm with those two and another friend of ours who's around town somewhere. Heresy waves. Uh, Yildred just kind of nods. Um, we are, uh, we're a bit of adventurers as well. Uh, have you heard of any uh, exciting uh, or interesting things to investigate yet? Um, the, the other three kind of look at each other for a moment or Ildra kind of looks at the other two for a moment uh Heron just kind of looks at you um Ersi starts to say oh, we've only been in town for a, a day and um Adrian kind of inserts um oh we're kind of just we're kind of just looking for work we're gonna see you know how things go looking at the festival hoping for maybe a nice uh caravan guard job move to a new city on our way, um, you know, heard there was some work here. Just kind of seeing what what happens. We're also part looking for a vacation, I guess. 
Oh, well. Ah, oh, that must be nice. Uh, she says, the, uh... Yes, we need quite a break after, after our time spent in Rheinham. Rheinham. Uh, Rheinham oh. is the big city. The ne the. The next Sorry. grin smart sounds. The, the cat just made a weird sound. Um, oh. I thought she was coughing up on me. It was very. Uh, no, Rheinham is a city. Um, Gren Grensmont's a town at, at best. Uh, okay. Rheinham is a city, and it is at the top of the neck, essentially. Um, the neck, of course, being the the land between the two big lakes. Uh, it is the Altaran city between where you are, the capital, and Seraphis. Because on the map, where um, the border of Darum is, is the wall of Seraphis. Okay. Um, Rheinham is essentially sorry I'm super hot due north of Grensmott and until sweaty. the top of the water <laughs> and then right or east I'm sorry I have to run through the bathroom otherwise oh. I don't have to go anymore alright so um I don't know what we were doing oh, I was just chit chatting I don't want to know what we were doing yeah I was just chit chatting with that other group Trying to find out what they heard, what they know around town. Not much. Um, so, Ersi was talking about um, needing a break after uh, Rheinham. Yeah, Rheinham. Um, Pork Rhine. Yildra kind of um, uh, kind of grimaces a little bit. And uh, Harn, uh, in a very deep voice, you haven't, you haven't heard him speak yet. You know, Rah. Good to be out of the city. Um, I have a meta question a bit. Wouldn't uh, Bebo and I have traveled through Rheinham to get here? Hmm. And how big is Sindrus compared to Grensmont? Sindrus is huge compared to Grensmont. Oh, Grensmont oh. is tiny. Compared yes. to any city. Sindrus okay. is a real city. Oh, okay. Um, Sindrus is a... Uh, yeah, is a, is a real city. Um, Rheinham is bigger than Sindrus by probably a factor of like two or three, but uh, Sindrus is a, is, a, is a classic fantasy city. Um, okay. Rheinham... Uh, you didn't need to come through Rheinham... Um, so the question is whether or not you would have gone to a big city that was slightly out of your way. Well, if we didn't need to, not necessarily, but uh, Tessora certainly feels more comfortable in a city than in the wild. Right. Because you were coming from the um, from the east, or from the west, so um, it depends on it depends on how closely you kind of stuck to uh, excuse me, to the um, the lake shore, so we'll just yeah we'll just say no for now. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh. Yeah, so Harn says, um, all the cobble streets are a bit harsh on the feet. Us, all the people. A lot of people here, but at least they're having fun. Not. Uh, not city life. Well, I mean, it's still a small town. It's not like living in the wild, or, or even from what I hear, Baytown. Um, Adrian will said, "That and I do prefer my prostitutes in one piece." And, I agree. Uh, <laughs> Eildra will backhand like hard, like on the shoulder. Uh, ow. Um, Eresi will say, That's "Such bad taste, Adrian. We just met these people." Oh no! Don't, don't mind me. Worse will come out of my mouth, no doubt. Um, Adrian rubs and he says, "No, she's right. Um, what? Right around the time we were leaving Rheinham, um, so." Spot a 
spotted news. Um, several um, working ladies were um, pretty brutally murdered in the uh, in the docks district. And I'm sorry, Yudra. In bad taste. I had not heard about this. And uh, Ildra will say, No, I imagine the news has not come this far yet, but it was unpleasant, for sure. Uh, and I'm not doing a great job of that accent, but that accent is a... Um, or her accent is a heavy northern... Um, like the near, or... Is that what no, it's called? like 12 tribes. Uh, oh, okay. Further north? Yeah, like north. Real yeah. north? Okay. Um, Alright. Um, was there any culprit apprehended? Any leads um, to these men? She says... Ghastly does. Not that we heard. The Our business brought us out of town prior to that. Um... We thought about looking into investigating it, but we were needed elsewhere. Interesting. Reinham has good guards, uh, and Altara is known for justice, so perhaps. Hmm. Well, that gives me something to think about. Do I have, have I seen Badger come down at all yet? Um, not yet, but, uh, okay. you, it would be probably around this time that, uh, you would hear the, the door, um, open and a slightly, mostly shoveled, but slightly disheveled, um, badger coming down the stairs, kind of finishing talking, like, you know, his chain, you know, like, chain into his pocket and just looking back his hair and whatnot. Kind of <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'll finish up with them by saying, uh, well, uh, it looks like my business has arrived, so um, do be careful if you leave town. There are gnolls everywhere, it seems, and bugbears and other goblin types. Harn uh, hits the table and says, Ah, gnolls! Yes, we should we should stay here. Adrian, no. That's, well, not I'm in here, yeah. Or Tessis, and I'll... I'll see you all later. And I'll walk back to the bar. Salute. I'll give a wink to the... Uh, uh, what was the name? Ildra? H human? Ildra. Ildra. Yeah. 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 Ildra. She kind of just n nods, and you get the impression that she... I, If you were meaning anything more by it, she was not picking that up. Damn. All right. Twice in one campaign. Ugh. She got nothing for me. This woman's got nothing for me. What's a girl to do? Gotta go for the dragonborn. <laughs> um. I think she has her eye on that. <laughs> um. There's a thing for. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um. Anywho. Uh. The so Badger uh, gets up uh, behind the bar and kind of s saddles over to you guys and says, "Well, I wasn't expecting to do business quite so early, but what would you guys like to discuss?" Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Dead gnolls. <laughs> yes. Alone. Yes. So you were All successful. All the gnolls. <gasps> Oh no, we're, your friend. Did everything go okay? Oh yes. Uh, no? Well, let's just say he's having some work done. Yes. He's, is, I'm asking if your friend was killed in battle. He lives. Oh, God, people. It's complicated. It's complicated. You can't do that to us here. Having a little tuck. Okay. Um, he says, so you were successful then? 
Yes. In killing all the gnolls, yes. There's a whistling sound. Um, he says, well, then I guess I owe you the choice now. 50 gold or membership? What do you think, guys? Is it 50 gold each? That's membership, membership. for four, right? It's Each of you has the decision of 50 gold or membership. Well, I guess Bebo will have to choose later. Unless you can, like, magically text him. No, Be Bebo, uh, I, th I think, chose membership, but it won't matter. But... I mean, the clubhouse okay. isn't nice, but we might make some money. I'm going to choose the gold. Well, you seem like a nice guy, so I'll go for the ship. I've never been in a club. So, so you you yes, as well. <laughs> yes. He uh, reaches in his, his breast pocket and he pulls out a handful of um, something. You know, sure. And he opens his flyers. <laughs> he opens his palm and he's got uh, four pins. <laughs> They're invoices. This is our membership dues. <laughs> <laughs> He's got uh, four pins, and the pins are um, little silver um, pins that would go on like uh, your your coat clasp or like your lapel. Um, and they are a tree with um, a crossed axe and a cross sword, a sword and an axe crossed uh, in front of the tree. Um, and it's kind of like a a runic like motif. It's not like tree. It's more like oh, that's a tree. Um, and he picks out two, and he places one in Shay's hand and one in Grim's hand, and he looks at Tessora and says, "Gold." Yeah. And he Gold. says, "Can always try later." And he puts those back in his in his pocket, and he uh, takes out a little purse from his other pocket, jingles it, listens, and hands it to uh, Tessora. Um. And he says, uh, turning slightly from Tassora to mainly talk to the two of you, he says, welcome. Well, thank you. I hope we will have a um, fruitful relationship. Indeed. Our members enjoy the finest of first choice on quests and missions and bounties. And by that, I mean we don't give bounties to anyone else unless we are testing them which is 50 gold later on, plus an additional test at that time. Uh, he says to Tessora. And then... Um, I'm about 25 gold into counting it. <laughs> it is all there, by the way. Um, I'm surprised you don't count it like a blackjack dealer counts chips. I've always imagined but, dwarves being able to... Yeah, that's 300. But I, I wasn't <laughs> He's got the stack of <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Um, sorry. Uh, I, I'm going to interrupt real quick. So, if you do see Tessora doing something that is traditionally not dwarvish at all, she was not raised by dwarves. So, I'm sure we'll get into a little backstory at some point, but yeah. Dark secret, not raised by dwarves. Um, not really a dwarf. A fake dwarf. That's, that's dun, what she is. A four. <laughs> Yeah, four. <laughs> um, this beard isn't even real. Um, <laughs> like, like she doesn't braid her hair. You're, or anything you're actually like that. six That's... feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been looking at her like the wrong way. Oh, just been hunched over <laughs> with a fake beard. <laughs> She's wearing shoes on her knees. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real reason she can only move twenty-five feet per round. Dwarf on golf. She's always standing in a hole. Okay. Um, he will say um, and in fact I have uh, a job for you if you're up for it now but uh, tell me on your last job how did the cleansing go what is the state of the gnolls dead very dead well, I'm sure that the Piled. destruction of their shrine will be quite the shift in their power in the region. And that is ideal. Yes. 
the only gnolls we've seen on the way back have been a, a small hunting party near the bridge. And I point you. Um, I imagine that's supposed to work. They're, see. they're dead too. Oh, yes. you dealt with them as well. Excellent. Uh, as much yes. as I hate the to endorse the wholesale slaughter of of a territory of peoples. Um, well, their dark gods seem... are still yes, non-member. <laughs> you can tell it's it's in, it's in fairly well, good. Consider like... this free info then. Uh, they are in a dispute for territory with it looks like goblin folk. His face changes. Um, goblins. They. You can pay me for more information after this. I think you can get out of my bar if you're going to set deals like that. <laughs> <laughs> She's right, though. There was a uh, a goblin on a toad, for instance. A, I'm sorry, a toad riding goblin. Yes, it was a very big toad and a small goblin. <laughs> Large toad. Did you? See I think it was else? a were toad. Did you see anything else about this goblin? Banners, rival, uh, rivalry, li li livery, li li livery. Um. Was it carrying a sign? I am this. Uh, he says, swamp tribe, perhaps. They were swampy. You did come out of the water, yeah. Hmm. That is interesting. Swamp goblin. There have always been goblinoids mm. in the region warring with the gnolls. But an alliance with the Swamp Tribe is interesting. Perhaps yeah, the balance get, of power is shifting. balance of power in a very bad way. Well, anything that gets rid of shrines to the Gnoll's Dark Gods is still favorable. However, the Big Swamp Tribe presence... What? What you're saying is we should leave before giant toads and goblins invade the city and try to kill us. He says, I think perhaps there is room for scouting. Change of the bounty board. I have two potential jobs for you. No. I will give you each 50 gold including non-members, this is the standard rate, um, to search for... Membership has such perks so far. Such perks. He says, mm -hmm. if you can find or scout for signs of a war camp. Because now I am curious. As this war camp explain, from the... From the goblins. Okay. Although I doubt very much it will be goblins running the war camp. Um, he says, I have known of higher goblin presence, but for them to make such a move, and especially to ally with the Swamp Tribe, that is a curious shift of power. Knowing about any more activity would be useful. So yes, 50 gold to each of you, including your large friend, if he goes along. Um, what is who are the swamp tribe? They are a tribe of goblins, um, who are interesting in their ways, very adept at moving amphibiously. Uh, they raise toads and lizards to large proportions, as you have seen. There's a lot of banjo music. And they know quite a bit about poison. So I would I would be prepared. Okay. Dwarf's like, eh. I will, of course, also treat this as a trial opportunity should you come back and wish for membership. Um, and then, of course, we have an open bounty with a bit of a time limit on it. Um, 
if you are interested. I am interested. What is it? He says, um... I sent out a few hunters previously. Uh, they have been unable to complete the task or have not returned. That's neither here nor there. I'm sure they're fine, or they knew the risks, and this is part of the trade. I have these berries, and he holds up a little a little jar that has um, eight uh, purplish blue berries in it. Uh, they look like blue Member? berries. But Member berries? What? Member berries? They're from South Park, the one. Uh, they look... I remember. They, <laughs> they look like... Um, <laughs> this is not the Cthulhu portion. We're, we're moving. Um, the uh, they look kind of like um, raspberries, but they're purple or blue. Um, and he says, "Raspberries." I, I have eight of these. Uh, I only have eight of these left. They will spoil in the next five days or so. Um, I have a contract from local alchemists to retrieve a paste made from these berries. Specifically, the paste must go, must be made by traveling through the gizzard of a cockatrice. There is a layer of cockatrices. Cockatrice? Cockatrice? Cockatrine. Cockatru! Um, to the north. Um, there is Why a... are we just finding out about this now? We've been wandering the woods for weeks and nobody told us there were a cockatrice somewhere in a fucking lair. There should be a sign. Oh, there will like, be signs. Maybe, maybe when you get here, you should be like, ooh, don't go north, there's cockatrice. And if I told you about every owl bear or harpy in the woods, we'd be here all day. Harpy? Owlbear? Gee, where's the sign for that shit? Where this do you think you've been living this whole time? <laughs> Holy God. Didn't you come from the south? <sighs> you came from near the Briarwood. Far more dangerous than here. Valrie, save us all. There's going to be mummies every. <laughs> so essentially, I need you to find some cockatrice. Get them to Sounds eat like the berry. Sounds like won't be hard. <clears throat> have the berry... Wait. Consumed. Wait, wait, wait. Feed it a berry? I wouldn't. I wouldn't actively feed them. I would maybe, like, bait them with the berries. No, so wait. Wait, just so just so we all understand, this is not a seek and destroy mission. We're not killing the cockatrice. <laughs> You're going to have to kill the cockatrice. Too... But they have to pass the berry. But after not we get them to shit totally. out the snozberry. No. No, you need to obtain it while in the gizzard. Okay, so it... Wait, so feed it a berry, then kill it. It has to be it. fed, and then killed, and then mm -hmm. the berries must be removed from within. Can we kill it and then feed it the berry? No. It must pass oh, naturally God. through the system of the gizzard. <laughs> it is that important to note. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, <laughs> what does this ludicrous mission pay? <laughs> Well, before I tell you that, let me warn you that when a cockatrice consumes this berry, it will become super powered. No, I'm I'm kidding. It it gains no nat unnatural strength. This is just it, it likes the berries. Uh, the berries are used as an alchemic material um, for various high-end magical purposes. Um, see, we here at the guild get these contracts to get things, and we pay you a portion of. Um, what is is there a, is there a particular time like when do we know that the schnozberry is 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 in his schnooze? Uh, is there is there roughly is five eyes minutes after widened. after eating it? So we have to feed them, then wait, then kill them and bring their carcasses. So you need back to so get it so, the... somewhere when it's passed through here. It's basically, after they swallow the berry, as soon as it's in the gizzard, you're good to go. Gizzard means go. Um. I will give you uh, 100 gold and three healing potions. Standard member fare. Per cockatrice? No. That eats a bear? I need, uh, at minimum, th 
three of these. Gee. Christ. You would need to kill three, uh, roughly the equivalent of three cockatrice to, to get enough haste. Um, how many hunters on this quest? How how many hunters did did you lose doing this? And how many schnozberries? Yeah. Uh one has not returned and two did not complete the quest. I have Question. lost maybe double this amount of berries. Hence why it is my last set of berries. Assuming we fail. And assuming in that worst case five scenario days. that worst case scenario mm -hmm. what were to happen if say one of us ate a schnozberry i mean they really would we then really become tasty. superpowered would we they be don't, superpowered they don't have superpowers like the cockatrice i i don't know how guys help me out here he, it's a it's a joke barkeep they don't give them superpowers they're just berries they're rare spoil fast so I feel like I feel like this job, uh, considering the risk factor and oh, the complexity, of it, they're, they're giant chickens. They're fine. They're fine. Right. It's a berry. I feel like uh, you are this hunters is now of the guild. Yeah. This is what you do. Yeah, but I also I feel may like be reconsidering it. that membership. Pin the pin. I, feel like I mean, if. If if the next four levels are going to be spent just wandering around killing things so I can become a Jedi in 16 hours, I've played that game. That's a side quest. Uh, My intention was for today for us to get through like three side quests. So, you, no, you're fine. Just do the, <laughs> so, do the temp okay, shop. So it feels like we've been demoted from killing gnolls to killing chickens after having fed them fucking... Just knowing a passing amount about cockatrice, we are going. To, they are not chickens. We're fucked. Um, they're not nice. They're not, no, they're especially. Not. And we're, this is a lair. We're not talking about a cockatrice. We're talking yeah. about cockatry, or however that word is. Is that my phone? Like yeah. this is the whole village. I mean, like he holds you up a crude drawing. Like they're not that. Oh, see, you're fine. Yeah, one of them's they're fine. They're challenge rating half. You'll be. You'll be fine. Times twenty is. They're really only territorial against themselves and other uh, other creatures. They are. They're mostly not afraid of humans, or mostly afraid of humans, and other. Okay, I. Okay. Other sorts. What? I just want to make sure I've got all the details of the quest right, metagaming wise. We have eight berries. Yes. You get three of them fermented in a cockatrice gizzard. Yes. Which basically means it needs to swallow the berry, and in the time it takes you to kill the cockatrice after it swallows the berry, you're good. It can't go past his stomach. Yeah, you don't want to wait several hours for it to poop it out. Or okay. run away. And we're going to get paid one just gross. and three healing potions in total afterwards? Yes. Okay, and we have five days to complete it. Is that what you said? In five days, the berries will spoil. Okay, so we need to get it done in four or less days. Has anybody tried making wine from the spoiled berries and see what happened? Uh, Barkeep says, What do you think we did with all the other berries? He taps the keg. Fair enough. <laughs> what do you think you've been drinking? <laughs> Those are the ones that passed through a little too much. I, f I feel like this, this job is worth, worth more than 100 gold. And Patrick says, I, it's really not. It's well, if, this. once we get the once we get the gizzards with the paste, we can ask around and see how much it's worth. Fair point. Uh, Patrick will or say, just smoke it. It is in your best interests not to take my resources and shop around elsewhere. <laughs> We're members now. Especially as members of the guild, you should be looking to help the guild in all of her endeavors. I don't know. Her endeavors seem to be getting us killed at the mouths of like a thousand cock. Cockatrices don't eat people. Yet. Oh, they eat berries. I'll bet it's still... I'll bet it's this still is the entire hurt. point of that. Like, why? Where is this? It's gonna hurt. 
You might. If you it might was get easy, pecked. you wouldn't pay a hundred gold. They have. You wouldn't claws. pay hundred gold if it was easy. Chicken wrangling is hard too. But look at me. Look at how big I am. Chickens. Scary shit. <laughs> so. It does sound uh, like an adventure. Yeah, the Goblin War Camp. Let's go find it. I mean. Is it? Why are they, both? Pro, are they, yeah. Are they in the same direction? That would be helpful. Uh, he says, if I knew where the Goblin War Camp was, I wouldn't need scouts. Well, but you, you might have a, a general idea, like Gumball do. looking south, for instance. No, we go back uh, to that bridge that we crossed, and we come from? giant toad butt splashes all the way back. Where did it come from? Well, I'm guessing it's not to the south, because the Knolls contain, uh, control the southern area, or at least have until now. And look okay. at that! That leaves the north! Which is where the cockatrices are. Seriously, I have five days to get this done. It would be really helpful if you could just take this quest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're trying, at the least. Yeah, I agree. Even the non-member is up for this. Yeah, I'm in. I'm, this sounds cool. So in six days, we eat the berries. Agreed. If we fail. I mean... You're going to have a bad time, but yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, do I need to look in on your friend while you're gone? No, he's well taken care of. They're yeah, he should, he should still be getting that nip and tuck we talked about. Okay. We should be at 5.4 right about now. That's fair. Um, he hands you the little jar or the little vial of berries. Kind of holds it out. It's like, which one of you is going to take it? And shake. No. Um. And then. I break stuff too easy. He says, "When you come back, uh, see me or barkeep for your reward." Um. Season's been a little slow, so there might be other bounties. We'll see. And away we go. <laughs> yeah, unless you have any more information that you're. Oh, actually... Nope, nothing. We don't have anything. We don't know anything else about anything. So you haven't found anything that's... Potentially nothing of interest anything. to anyone, especially not you. Well, I was but, really hoping I that mean, you'd find... We were... Yes? But yeah. if we were to find something of any true value, or great value, would... I mean, we would obviously have to negotiate for it, and... And we ourselves would need a chance to inspect it and make sure it's not dangerous to give to anyone that we don't trust. Of course. Yes. I have expressed willingness to buy any items of interest. Not saying that we don't trust you, of course. Well, you are well, guild members now, so I am your guild exactly. master. So I would hope that there would be some level of trust there. Oh, absolutely. That wasn't sarcasm. Um, I actually have a question uh, <laughs> I did not know the answer to. Uh, if there was a green crystal on that shrine, the the one for the gnolls, uh, I'm I'm lying in game. No, I, I just okay. Um, do you know anything about glowing green crystals in the area? Um, or should we talk I, to Minerva about that? Minerva would know more about the inner workings of something magical. However, yes, I have heard legend of crystals being used um, by the early Daxian to as lights, uh, as torches, um, ever burning. Uh, Sources of energy. Hmm. Uh, would you pay for those if we were able to collect some from the areas around here? There would be a novelty to hmm. it They're that not any much. sort of if... bulk would not be interested in, but perhaps. A few here and there. Okay. We'll see what we can uh, pick up along our journey. Well, Badger, this was almost pleasant. Pleasant. Uh, Tessora, it was oh. good to see you. I do hope that you will reconsider one day when you are not as in uh, need of cash. Because I, 
the bon the boons of membership are are quite worth it. We'll have to see. Look at these snazzy pens. Out of game, it's not like I've run three entire campaign games dedicated to the Hunter's Guild. I know, but... but no, 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 I'm, I'm, te I'm teasing. Um, well, but, I'm sure uh, we'll get into some backstory stuff in a campfire talk or something at one point, and I'll explain part of that. Why yeah. it's not... That's fine. Okay. Um, I still need to send you my whole to... backstory, too. Yeah, at some point, it would be forget. useful. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 50 gold is the entrance fee for, for yeah. base membership. It's not hard. You've already kind of proven well, it. Well, her... Her backstory is only twenty-two pages right now, so we'll see where it gets. Well, I don't. I don't read <laughs> anything less than a hundred for anything okay. more than a hundred. It has to be exactly one hundred. Oh, okay, okay, one hundred pages, right? Well written, Oxford commas. <laughs> okay. Ooh, great! All right, <laughs> go bust out the college English books. Um. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna leave and give one last nod to the adventuring group uh Ersi will goodbye good luck mm -hmm. nice meeting you yes pleasure are you okay well, I'm I, go to I didn't see if you did anything I just no sorry I can only look so many places at a time, so if you do if you do anything quietly, I I may not see it. Yes, Shay. Well, I think we're done with official business for today. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna check out uh, the festival. Have a good time. Sounds like fun. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna check in on uh, Bebo at Fizzwicks. Okay. And uh, um, same direction. So yeah. you go and literally festival alley right here, physics right here. So like the doors face each other, um, okay. for better or worse. Uh, you enter physics, kind of walk towards the thing. You hear clambering in the back, and then uh, you're kind of like, oh, it's a lot of noise, and you hear like small poppings and explosions and tinkering noises, but like up to eleven. Um, and then you hear. Oh, Tessora, you're here. And you turn, and Bebo's head is just sitting on a shelf. <laughs> well, that's. <laughs> but um, behind like that behind is not it... helping her with the the trauma that she has experienced and inflicted in the past. Yeah, two is, days. he is, is there behind still the a fence. bullet hole in it. No, I I I do think he got shot in the chest. I could that's be wrong. I haven't, head, play, I haven't played back the. In the head, so I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, he, he's just <laughs> looking at you, uh, the same, but just no body. And he's like, Fizzwick is fixing up my body in the back. He's adding, uh, various things for, um, and <laughs> you, you expect that it's the same thing that he normally does where he, like, covers up his, and then whispers, but he doesn't have a body. So he just, like, there's the, still the pause of getting in position. And he goes, I'm working on protection stuff. Very good. Yes. Um. Uh. Well, I I hope it all goes well and uh, scream if Fizzwick uh, does anything improper. I oh, know he's very he's very nice and gentle. Okay. Well. Uh, I'll see you later. Say hi to Grit. Uh, um, say say hi to Shay and Grim for me. Um. Yeah. I I will. Bye, Tesora. Bye. I'm gonna go. Uh, how I'm a, uh, How much is a crossbow? I think twenty-five gold listed in the book. Man, I'm spending all this money. So... You can actually go to buy him a crossbow. It's important to note he has at least two working crossbows. <laughs> and I think a ballista. I don't know if that's canon yet. We haven't decided. Uh, at the festival, um. You see various booths of all different things. There is, um, you know, a, a minstrel or bard playing some music. Uh, it's uh, fairly lively. Uh, there's a lot of um, children and families out. Um, and yeah, just basically nice festival street. Um, you see a couple people that you've seen um, 
from uh, Tessa's, uh, just various, uh, you know, faces you recognize here and there. Kind of like games to do? Yeah, there's a few things. There's um, some games that look like they are um, using some sort of like prestidigitation or uh, other like illusory magic to, to, to do some stuff. Um, those seem to have a price tag attached to them um, with chances to win little trinkets. Um, a lot of like tin or uh, other metals that are like stamped in like, um, it's like badges or coins or something like that. Um, there are various people selling uh, potions, uh, various flavors that you know, like the equivalent of like pop rocks, but you know, like these are unique candies and whatnot. Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, Willy Wonka meets uh, Bizarre Carnival. Okay. And of course, the big tent uh, in the back where they do the show every night. Right. I just want to walk around, play some games, and uh, sure. get some snacks. Give me um, five silver and three dex checks. Okay. I will be right back. I'm yeah. sorry. No, take your time. A, d a dex check is... Um... We don't do those often. Just a d20, I guess. Just pure dex, no skill added in. Uh, that's 20. 60. And 5. Okay. Uh, Grim, were you in chain okay. together the whole time, or did you split up to kind of like, and then say, okay, we're going to meet back at the statue? No, I'm kind of following Shay around. Okay. I can I can pay for this, uh, the silver about it. You don't have to subtract that from the uh, party pool. Um, party pool. Party pool. <laughs> uh, you... The Grim's kind of following along. He's watching, and then... Um, he's not paying, like, super attention. Like, he's looking at everything that's around. And then eventually, like, you're kind of like, all right, I'm done with, with the games and the snacks. And you, like, you have, like, cotton candy, like, half in your mouth. And, like... <laughs> Uh, like a, a soda under one arm, and you like, you've like two plushy animals and like a little like copper medallion around your neck. And for some reason, this weird fake dog leash where there's no dog, but it looks like there should be a dog. <laughs> uh, so you won uh, two games of uh, of some sort of dexterous like throwing darts or whatever, and then um, that's where you got your plushies from. And they're like little, those little cheap, like, put in 50 cents, like, they're like, but like one is like a little, uh, scarecrow looking guy. And the other one, um, looks like it's maybe a, um, an owlbear. Okay. Um, not 100% certain. He's got a little bit of cushion in him. Um, he's stuffed with some sort of like cottony fluff. And the other one seems to be stu stuffed with like, uh, beans or, uh, straw. And then uh, the little medallion is for the game that you didn't quite win. Um, yeah, and then the rest is just you know snacks that you found along the way. It was an owlbear and a little scarecrow. Scarecrow. You're not sure if it's supposed to be a scarecrow or it's just a, a dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. I might do that. I call it plushies instead of plushies. You could call them floofs, I guess. But... Floofs. Oh, I like those even more. Fluff, fluff. Um, yeah. So, Starting uh, your floof collection. Yeah. Uh, having a good time. Yeah. Having fun. Um. Yeah. So it's just kind of normal. It's about lunchtime now. Uh, presumably Tessora has uh, caught up to you guys. Uh, everyone kind of just enjoying snacks and and whatnot. This is fun. This is a nice day. Are you having fun too, Grim? Yeah, uh, this is great. This is so much better than money. <laughs> I don't feel like you've established enough like personal connections yet for me to destroy the town. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that would be mean. <laughs> no, I guess I've done it before. This far, I know. <laughs> 
Okay, so what I really like this place. Screaming starts. This is fine. They'll wait, this is okay. they'll wait till yeah. we buy a place and we'll really put down roots and then the fireball. Oh, I God. Strongholds and followers. Just wait until we start families. Um, then it's going to get rough. Good thing you don't have a familiar. Can you imagine what he would do to one of those ravens if he got one? Oh, yeah, no, we can't have a raven pet just yet. Not until I can protect it better. <laughs> All right. Um, what? Uh... I do want to look around for a game where I can win a plush raven. There. Uh... Yeah, one of the plushies kind of looks like a little, like the side of it, like two bird-shaped pieces of cloth, just basically sewn together. Yes. Um, yes. Give me a uh, athletics check or a dex check. basically the equivalent of the uh, the basketball game. 15. Yeah, you uh, get enough balls through hoops that uh, mm. you are, he's like, would you like the tiger plushie? The and bird. The, the, the little bird? But little, you've earned the tiger bird. plushie. Uh, no, 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 little black bird. <laughs> yeah, black, black bird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like, now, uh, now get out of here you're creeping out the kids <laughs> I name it Valrie <laughs> uh, I know how you can cheer up the children do that spirit guardian thing <laughs> <laughs> For, forget to designate someone <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, Tessora you find uh, the group or the other two kind of walking through the festival. Um, Shay has an arm full of, like, soda and snacks. She has, like, two plushies and, like, a little bronze medallion that she's won from games. Um, Grim just won a little stuffed raven. Um, <laughs> like, a little, like, sewn together little raven plushie. Not, like, a stuffed raven. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's where, that's where we are. <laughs> yeah, Tessora is having a a panic attack and hyperventilating in the street after leaving Fizzwix. Well, that's probably not great. Are you having fun? <laughs> There's a wide berth around her. <laughs> <laughs> you, you okay? Biba, Biba's fine. Um, you know, I, uh, He's I, really I, getting I, ahead I, of the game with these upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, no jokes are made. Just, uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, <clears throat> I need to... Uh, I need to. I need Keep to. Keep your head about you to, now. Relax. And she kind of just turns and walks away, repeating, "I need to. I need to. I need to." Um, as you turn and walk, are, which way are you walking? Toward Ortessa's. Wait. Um, Ortessa's uh, to your left. If you're facing uh, Festival Street, and then Guardhouse and West or uh, that Adam East Gate to your right. No, going going left. Okay, so as you turn and start walking down, you bump into a man um, who says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Um, uh, and he kind of just gets out of your way, and you two you know, he kind of looks up at you and says, like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step in. He looks very nervous, he's clutching like a, a hat. He's well-dressed, not like a super, like, noble dress, but like well. Uh, well, she's breathing really heavy and just repeating, I need to, I need to, I need to, so. But you're still walking to Tessa's, or have you stopped? Yeah, no. Okay, still going to test. And he says, um, he was clearly coming in this direction. Uh, he says, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb your friend. Um, hopefully, hopefully she'll be okay. Get a, get a drink at Tessa's or something. She seemed upset. Yeah. Uh, there's hopefully. nothing upsetting here, is there? No, no, no. She just uh, visited a friend. He kind of, I guess, looks over the two of you. Um, decked out in your stuff. Um, but he, because you're wearing, Grim's wearing his armor, right, and all that. Please, please stop doing that. We're trying, we're trying, we're trying to build. Are you okay? You look nervous. He says, "Ah, uh, actually, I am. Um, are, 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 are you adventurers?" 
Are yes. You, are you are are you powerful warriors? Please, please, seriously, yes. please, please stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking. <laughs> um, the uh, he says, would, would, "Would you be would you be interested in 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 helping me?" Depends on with what. I uh, I need strong warriors to help protect me. Against what and why? Um. Should should we maybe go to the? Doesn't stuff like this usually happen at the at the tavern over over a drink in a quiet booth in the back? That's true. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've only read about this sort of thing in books. I'm sure it's not at all like the real thing, is it? Um, <laughs> it's just Shay has me in on flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> he says, "No, no, no, please let me let me let me buy you some ale, and we'll we'll talk." Um. And sure, and I'll lead him to that house. And as um as you're walking, uh, he kind of um motions to the side and you see a a well-dressed um man who's uh for lack of better he basically looks like you know a typical like carriageman or chauffeur or like butler um and he says um gerald i think these people are going to help us and the man says very good sir I have a booth waiting for us at, at the tap room. He says, ah, yes, excellent. He carries on. A little bit more chipper than he was nervous a minute ago. Slow, 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 with drinks still and plushies. You get to the door and it says no outside festival fair. No, it doesn't. Um, oh. <laughs> there's a table full of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, you enter into the tap room. And you see a, the the man has held the door open for, uh, the butler has held the door open for you. And um, the, uh, he gestures towards a booth over to the side. Um, and you see a um, fairly well-dressed woman in kind of the like maid version of the other man's dress. Um, so perhaps another another servant person, um, and she is uh, standing next to the table. And she has a little a little white card on the table that just says reserved in a really nice script. And as you walk towards it, she picks it up and tucks it into her uh, her apron. And um, the man says, um, "Oh my God, what is her name? I just had it a second ago." Um, I'm sorry. Um, MBC 43? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I literally just forgot her name. I had it. Her name is Bob. Uh, <laughs> Vault 173. <laughs> um, th thank you, Delilah. I, that's not what her name was going to be, but that is. Hey, 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 Delilah. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's <laughs> <laughs> and he sits down uh, across from you and the butler has turned away from there as a group and he brings two mugs of ale and a mug of ale uh, to um, the the man and the man says thank you please get yourself something as well and uh, he says I, I believe you this will be fine you can please enjoy yourselves and um, Delilah and Gerald nod, kind of look at each other, and then walk over towards is the door. The, is the Sora here too? That is now, I, Sora. Uh, on the way, Minu Minerva's is on the way, right? Minerva's From is Fizzwigs. right next door to Fizzwick's. Its door yeah. is on the opposite side of the corner, so like Fizzwick's is in this side, and then her door is here. Okay, she, or uh, Tessora definitely goes to Minerva's Okay. Uh, for a moment. Uh, 
So she probably just appeared from view. Like, after the guy starts talking to you, you're kind of... And then when you look up, Tessora has either already entered Tessa's or has turned somewhere else. All right, so what's going on in Minerva's? Oh, um, well, uh, I don't know if you want to pause the recording. I have some uh, met a couple of meta questions for okay. you as well. Okay. Um, what are your... I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to ask her if she has anything for anxiety or um, or uh, panic. Okay. She... Instead of meta questions, I'll just ask that. Um, she'll say... Um... She has essentially the equivalent of like tobaccos or whatnot, unless you're looking for actual medicinal level things. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, frankly, Tessor's probably not gotten a long rest since everything happened in the cave. Okay, then, uh, as a note, you are suffering one point of exhaustion. Okay, I, w I will note that. Um, um, the. She can offer you a sleep aid. She can offer you um, kind of the equivalent of like a nice like smoking thing. Um, not like marijuana per se, but not far off from that. But just like, like Gandalf's pipe weed, you know, like yeah, that kind of thing. Silly weed. She's an alchemist, um, so she also has you know stronger medicinal things. She's a doctor essentially. Just try the light stuff first, and we'll work our way up. Yeah, she'll um, so just, send widget yeah, to go get some something. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, how much gold should I mark off for that? Uh, I'd say five silver, maybe. Okay, I'll just I'll put down a gold for the help and all that stuff. And she'll she'll give you some instructions on what to do and like what, if you still feel this way, what to come back for and what to tell her and all that. She'll go through. Okay. All right. Uh, back in the tavern, um, the the man says, so um. I've, I've never done this before. Uh, it's all so exciting. And quite, actually, I'm quite a bit nervous. And he takes a big drink and a little bit spills on his own. Oh. All right, we'll, we'll leave that for now. Um, so how does how does this work? Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Where, where, are my, where are my manners? Um, my name is uh, Gavin Treyborn. Uh, and, and who, who do I have the pleasure of, of meeting? Um, well, nice to meet you. I'm Shay Weston. Okay. Yes. Mrs. Weston. Hi. Sir, 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 hi? Is that, is my, am I pronouncing that correctly? Hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> so, Shay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, um, God, this is so, I'm just, I'm just very nervous because, uh, well, the, the cars are out to get me now. Um, the, so I have inherited a bit of property near Stilken, just, just to the north, uh, on a bluff overlooking the lake. Um, I, I am not the first to inherit it. Um, my uncle left it to someone, and then someone else, and then someone else, and then someone else. There is a contingency, or a a a a, a the the passing of the deed is contingent upon a task. Um, it seems that Uncle Seamus wanted. Or requires that someone spend three nights in the mansion um, in order to, to, to earn the deed, the, the heart of the Treyborn, as it were. And, um, uh, well, you see, no, no one else has been able to do it. And I have, um, I have one, one more, one more, one, one more week to, to be able to do it before, oh. um, the deed passes to to no one and the mansion is uh is is foreclosed upon. Uh, um, just a second, Shay. Yeah. This sounds like we get a free place to stay for three days. That's true. I'm also wondering what the exact wording of the deeds are. 
Does it go to the ones who stay three nights? Interesting. Yeah, it would, would be worth finding out. Yeah. So, I was thinking that um, because everyone has either been chased away by the haunting shrieks that they hear inside the manor, or has died during their stay, uh, that I should hire some strong adventurers to help me. Because Gerald and uh, let's ex you know, let's expand Delilah on the nice, but no, uh, let's go back and expand yeah. on the died during their stay. Uh, well, well, only 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 two. Um, my other uncle had a heart attack, but he was very old. And then um, my cousin. Uh, well, they 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 found him there the next day. He almost made it too. Had he lived through the night, would have been his. Very sad. Very sad. Very scary, if you ask. <laughs> if you ask me. What um what happened to him? How did they find him? Um All over. <laughs> no He was uh <laughs> Screaming and in pieces? No, they um uh... What? What's a what's a good word? Withered, withered. Yes, withered. Is withered. there a mummy? I don't. Uh, n n no, no. The, the, my the the deed. I uh, my my parents are both gone, so neither my father nor my mother. Um, we're we're, we're within the uh, the ascendancy here for this. Uh, it is very important uh, for me to mark my place in the family. Uh, I, I I need to I need to complete this task. But, but does the deed say that you have to spend three nights now? Yes. So we would have to guard you throughout the, the three nights. <laughs> that would be ideal. Yes. And how much does this job pay? I will give a hundred gold to every person who helps, who is qualified. And this is north of here? This is north of Stilken. Stilken is a fishing, villages, a fishing village to the west. So it's northwest of here? Yes. That would uh, still give us two days a, a day's to find the cockatrice. Right. The normal rate for these sort of jobs, considering the length and the complexities and dangers of the task, um, I believe the normal rate would be around... 200 um give give a persuasion check okay i can do that this is the episode where jason reveals that he's a huge vintage don knotts fan <laughs> <laughs> do we get to meet mr chicken that took me a second 25 Oh, that's persuasive. Oh, um, that's, that's a lot. Um, how how would you feel about um, 150 each, perhaps? Um, fit, that's 50 gold a, a, a night. Um, I could I could maybe plus maybe a a tip at the end. 150 guaranteed, um, 50, 50 for each night, and then and, and a, a, a bonus for completion. Well, okay. all right, considering your um, in such dire need. Oh, yes, the, uh, the direst. I'm willing to accept that rate. Ex excellent. Uh, he holds out his hand. Oh, excellent. He grabs your other your hand, both and shakes. It's like, I am so very happy to to have done this. Um, have have you have you ever fought bandits? Yes, we have. What is what is it like? And that's basically how the rest of this is going to go <laughs> until you kind of are done, and then he will leave. Or after about um, probably about after like twenty minutes. Gerald will come and say something to him, and he'll say, very good. Uh, are you ready to leave now? 
Uh, we are going to have to pick up uh, our companion. No, you're not. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which companion. <laughs> I went to be Bebo's not involved. Whatever side quest no, we do uh... today, and then whatever side quest we do then. So Tessara, it's I just they're just yeah. gonna trade out. Uh, yeah, I was talking about. Yeah. So he says, and of course, uh, the the rate will be for her as well. Yes. Of course. Excellent. Excellent. We're gonna need to get going soon because we'll only have a couple of days left for our other job. That's true. We'll have plenty of time for, for that. Okay. Uh, he says, "Well, are are you doing that first, or or this, or what? Are, what do we want to do? Let's let's go do this. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Sounds like a nice uh, nice three day weekend overlooking uh, the cliff. For the record." This will take you at minimum five days. Oh. Stoken is at least a day away. He he has promised a, a day of travel in uh, his carriage. No. Okay. At that point, our berries will have yes died. Yes. Okay. Maybe we should go do the berry thing first. Okay. Well, we have to do a berry thing first, but after that. Lives of adventures are so very strange, aren't they, Delilah? We, can, we do our berry so, thing. We can meet you in Stilken in four days. Oh, uh, I mean, hmm. Should it probably shouldn't take about four days. I just wait here until you're back. That sounds good. He says, "Gerald, okay. the, the finest room, please." Thank you. Well, we'll hurry up, and uh, we'll meet you back here then. Okay. Please do enjoy you, the festival. You happen to have access to like a a fast carriage. Oh yes, uh, we should be able to reach my my hopefully my mansion. Um, you, you see, well, no, I was I was thinking my, if in a day, if you were to loan us your carriage for our current job, oh, we might oh. be able to return much quicker. Don't we have to go into the forest for that? You you do a, a carriage would probably not be very. Oh, easy. then never mind. No roads. Um, he says, I I suppose that would be. If you need my carriage, I, then yes, you, you may use my carriage. That is appreciated. I'm sure we'll we'll Gerald will quicker. look at you, and it's the look that says, he may not, but like if you take our carriage, there will be a problem. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't have to say. We're not going to use it anyway. Okay. Um, Trees. All right. So you have quests on the board? Plenty. I did not get the name of that quest giver, only his butler. Uh, Gavin Trayborn. Okay. His butler is uh, Gerald, and his maid is uh, Delilah. And his hey, uncle was Seamus. Seamus is the uncle, yeah. Seamus Trayborn. All right. Um, let us move faster. What are we doing? We're Bears. going to, yeah. We're going to find some of those, sir. Yeah, oh, I mean, if we're in a hurry, all the stuff I had to build was just backup uh, stuff, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can use off hours and whatnot, and your, I mean, your engineering pack goes with you, so you yeah. just have to be able to commit at least an hour at a time to a total. Yeah, okay. You can't do, like, a um, minute for 60 days, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um... So rests are perfect for putting the hour in or whatever. Okay, um, you are still at a level of exhaustion, however. I'm, I'm going to stick to that. Yeah, um, that's fine. Disadvantage on checks. I uh, Have you come back to tes uh, Tessa's now? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so. actually, um, I was going to stop by Grins to okay. get a special uh, light crossbow made. Sure. Um, uh you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna wait for that because I can build it myself, right? And actually, probably Fizzwick would be a better a... yeah. Fizzwick would probably be a better place to go if you want something custom made. That's a firearm, uh, which okay. I so count, or I does. or I can or you can or I can make it absolutely yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I'll skip that and go to Ortesis. Yeah. It would actually be pretty easy for you to make compared to like a gun. Um, okay. Okay, so you go to Tessa's and um, you uh see them wrapping up their meeting 
and the man goes and uh, has a seat at the bar. And he look, now he looks excited. Before he looked really nervous, uh, like I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I, I, I'm very worried about something, but now he seems excited about everything that's happening. Uh, your two party members are kind of like looking at each other like, okay, okay, let's do this. And uh, they stand up and they see you, you see each other. Uh, so there you go. I am going to actually pause the recording here for a moment. All right, so you guys have met back up in Tessa's. Hi. Uh, were you talking to that man? Yeah, he offered us a job. Another one? Yes. Fantastic. How much is this one paying? Uh, 150 each and a bonus at the end. Oh, very nice. Very nice. If we live. Well. Um, so, uh, uh, what's, what's he want us to do? He has to... Something with an inherent... Nights in a haunted castle? Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. We have, we have to make sure he survives. I'm not sure how good I would do against anything that's haunting uh, a residence. Well, we assume it's haunted. I mean, it could just be a... Uh... Some distant relative who um, is up to some funny business. Okay. Um, so what should we do first? Um, based on time constraints, I would suggest we start with the um, the birds. Okay. I think that's a good idea. I think if we... Uh, are either of you good at tracking? Well, I'm a city girl, so I'm not really. Are you? Not really. I mean, I could... I, I could try it, but... It's not something I ever learned. Okay, well... I know how to do it, I'm just not the best at doing it. Um... So... I think we should keep our eyes out for any goblin or gnoll uh, movements while we're on the way. Um, and if we do happen to come across goblins, I would ask, I know you're a great warrior, Grim, but maybe hold back a little and allow us, Shay and I to move in quietly. You mean not fight? Yes, uh, this was yeah, okay. a pure reconnaissance mission, I believe. No problem. For the goblins. So, yes. Uh, and if we do get in trouble, uh, here. And I hand you a hunting trap, a big, you know, bear trap. Uh, Perfect. How does this work? Yeah. Uh, and I almost snapped my face off. Yeah, don't, don't do that. You're going to set it and then put these pins in and just let it sit and something to step in it. Just not us. Yes. Um, I had other plans to make some other things, but I think we should get one or two of these jobs done before um, we head off for this mansion or this uh, haunted mansion. Do you know where it is? Stilken. Stilken. Well, that's that's a bit of a journey. So yes, uh, we should definitely get this stuff. Yeah. We should definitely get this done first. Okay. Oh man, that's four quests already today. That's that's good. One of them's not really a quest as much as rumor, but I'm sure we're business is booming. Um, all right. So what are you doing? Yep. Uh, should we head out now? Yeah, if yeah, you're ready. Find some cockatrice. Yeah. Let me just put my stuff away. If you. Uh, well, I'll. I'm taking mine with me. Yeah. Um. I'm out of time on my room here. I don't have any more days left. Uh, well, after the cockatrice, we get a free place to stay with our next job, so. You need to pay yeah, need at to. minimum three silver if you just want the same room as they have. Um, like the same quality room. If you don't care about having your own room, if you're just going to take like a third cot in their room then um, you can just do, you know, do like the one silver uh, portion of theirs. 
Uh, I don't know how many days you're paid up for. Uh, Shane Grimm. But um, if you want two days, I say you probably owe between the few of you five silver. If you want to ensure that the room is there when you get back, you need to pay for those nights as well. Um, mm. Etc. Or you can just try your luck when you get back. Either way. I'm going to pay for it. I just want to make sure we have a place to stay when we get back. All right, so... Uh... We could drop a party gold. Okay. You're going to need more than a gold. You're going to need... Uh... We could drop three party gold. Two gold will get you into the night after you get back. Presuming no extra time taken for this quest. Presuming like a day for this quest. Which is potentially the case. Um, okay. Uh, yes. You head out? Yep. Okay. Yes. I still have a point of exhaustion. Yes. Just not my party network. Trying to find what exactly one point of exhaustion is. Disadvantage on ability checks. Is that it? I think so. That's it. That's, that's fine. Well, it's probably not great for the tracker. No, probably not, but... Uh, Grim has probably a higher score in it. Anyway, Just yeah. someone needs to track. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can make tracking rolls. Okay. When you get outside uh, the east gate, what are you doing? Um, I think we're just heading north, right? That's where everything. Yep. Badger is. gave you a general, like what to look for, where to go, but there is no like path north. Yep. Um, we're gonna go there and look for what didn't he said. Give any information for goblin stuff, hmm. which is the whole point. We'll follow his instructions, but keep an eye out for goblin. Yeah, you know, spread out a little bit maybe to see, to make it easy to spot something, tracks or something. Okay, if you do that, we then all day within you earshot should make the survival check as you're kind of looking around the ground to move forward. No, yeah, I'm not saying we have to spend like a kilometer apart, but maybe uh, I don't know my how first survival check. Nice. I don't know how well you can fly in the forest, but maybe staying above us and keeping an eye out ahead would be better than you actually looking for tracks. It will be hard to be high enough to avoid like the branches without being above the canopy and therefore making it harder to like find tracks or like see things. Yeah. There's not a really a great in between. Okay. You're calling that shit. I think it would be better for just walk. Hey, I rolled two nines. Excuse me, a total of twelve for my check. Okay. Um, you are going in the correct direction. Uh, generally towards where you're having no trouble, kind of following what uh, Badger kind of explained to you would be the best way to to go. Um, after several hours, you haven't seen any tracks or like anything. You're just kind of traveling um make another whoever is looking make another set of survival truck uh checks 17 uh 7 okay grim you uh find some wolf prints um you kind of look they're kind of generally going in the direction that you're going and you kind of follow them along um all of a sudden, up ahead, you see you see a wolf. You see, dart behind a tree. It doesn't move. It's just this gray wolf just standing there, looking the other way. Kind of like hackles raised, like, but he's facing away from you, not moving, just standing. Guys, there's a wolf. So you guys kind of triangulate into him and come, and now you see it too, and it's just this gray, gray wolf, uh, just standing there, just not moving. Uh, you don't even see like its flanks rising and falling. It's it's just standing there, staring ahead. We should have we should have a closer look. Warhammer in one hand, 
gun in the other. Okay. Um, as you approach, uh... oh, this is this is a statue, like a statue of a wolf. Speaking really, of which, do really we well know made. anything about cock cockatrice? Do the Nature do the check. tracks that I was following lead to this statue? Yes. Yes. Fuck. And I thought mummies were bad. Uh, okay. Nothing in front of it? Uh, give me a survival check. What was the uh, nature check? Oh, nature. Okay. With disadvantage, I rolled two 12s, so 12. Um... Is nature wisdom? No. Oh, it's, oh, oh, I forgot. I was looking at wisdom. That's right. So it'd be 15. Okay. Cool. Um, you have heard, uh, you know, stories of uh, cockatrices being able to, um, of having a stony gaze. But you're not sure about that and I didn't make any mention of it. You feel like that would be pretty dangerous if something could just look at you and turn you to stone. Um, so oh. as you take your survival check, uh, Grim, what did you roll? I rolled a one oh. for a total of five. Okay. So as you're kind of looking at it, um, you hear the slight... You're looking in front of it, looking to see like what it's looking at. Um, you hear like the slight like rumble of moving like stone and like a little bit of like cracking, and you look back, and the like stone around the wolf is kind of cracking and then like the stone falls away in pieces and there's wolf under it and then all of a sudden like you guys all see the, the stone fall off the wolf and the wolf like is growling like <laughs> looks up at you kind of like lets out a yelp bark like snaps it and then runs away tears off in the other direction trying to like avoid dashes around Shay and runs off Come back, I want to be a friend. And the, the stone just turns to dust. We must be getting close. Yeah, I'll tell them what I know about cockatrice or what I've heard about them. At least. No, their what? gaze is... Their gaze, they have a petrifying gaze. Is the from legend. The, yeah, from That's the stories I've heard. They have, they have a petrifying gaze. That sounds terrible. What yeah, are you doing so, here? Um, what we're, you get better. <laughs> Somehow we're going to have to feed these berries to them. I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work. Uh, hmm. I'm going... I don't really have any extra clothes. Damn. All right, I'm going to take my nap nightcap. <laughs> and I'm going to make a blindfold uh, out of it. Okay. Yeah, but not actually you know, like cover my eyes yet. Just tie it around my head yeah, yeah. so it's fa fast action or yeah. access. Um, okay, uh, you see where it was facing. Um, it's forward north. You can see like um, fallen logs and you know debris of forest. And, you know, like fallen uh, leaves and uh, it looks like kind of like a. Um, darker area like more like denser up ahead with a bird shaped Dark forest <laughs> um i'm going to activate my my walkers and have uh the tiny one kind of scout ahead of us like 30 feet or so okay. if that's okay mm -hmm. Who has the berries? Shay. I do. Oh, mm -hmm. Shay does? Okay. Well, unless Shay gave them to you. Okay. Badger would not okay. have. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, um, your giant walker heads out ahead, and you kind of just order it to you know, stay ahead of you as you, as you go forward. Um, the, is it the mechanical walkers next to you, then? Uh, yeah, it'll be somewhere between me and Grim. Okay. 
Uh, but walking along with the party. All right. So okay. as you guys approach this um, it's kind of denser area, you're gonna have to climb around or over this uh this log. Um, or go you know, go around it. But uh, you see um, what looks like um. Not tracks per se, but like areas where something has kind of scuffed up the ground. Um, you actually see a feather stuck to this log. Um, so you think you're probably kind of in the, the, the right territory. Do we hear any uh, um, rooster noises or something like that? Chicken noises? Uh, you do not. <laughs> Well, I keep an eye out for anything that might resemble a chicken, but larger. I have a minus one in survival, so, you know. That's what Shay is doing. Alright. Um, anyone else? Um, Grim is terrified. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, I'm obviously not doing a very good job at tracking, so I'm going to follow Grim's lead and just be ready... For have a you know my gun ready to fire like a ready to action i guess to fire on something if it if it surprises us okay so are you moving into this area uh like stealthily so so that obviously means stealth checks okay yeah sounds good shay is the only yeah. one who does not have disadvantage on this um <laughs> wow Ooh. i rolled a two and a two I got another level total. I'll be right back. I have to wash my hands. I touch something. Gives me a total of three. Okay. I got 17. Okay. Shay's pretty well able to move quietly. The other two of you are moving through the leaves with the sound of rustling leaves. Um, sound of a bull in a china shop. It becomes clear that if you're going to continue to move through this area, you're going to be making noise. You broke up a little bit there at the end. If you're going to continue to move through this area, you're going to be making noise. <laughs> In exactly the same spot. Yeah. We need to what if we're going to continue? It is clear that if you are going to move forward, you are going to be making noise walking through any of this area. Ah, uh, okay. Because of the leaves. Especially me. The sword is barely lifting your feet. Just, uh, yeah. I don't know. Very tired. You're muted, George. <clears throat> um, uh, can I make a stealth check with the tiny walker since it has a stealth uh -huh. score? Oh, he did pretty well. It's a 20 total. Okay. The tiny walker. He's just moving, moving through the the leaves, and every once in a while a little thing comes up, looks around, and then moves through the leaves. Yeah. But it's not like a thing to see, it's just like one of its little stiletto hands. Yep. Seen a bit too much Star Wars there, didn't it? Um, Fantasy so yeah. Wars. Uh, this area looks to be like an area that certainly some sort of birds have been making a life in, uh, or some portion of their life, but... It's just a sea of noises that you're going to be making. Yeah, there's not much we can do. We can spread out a bit. If yeah. they know we're coming, maybe just get the berries out and get ready to throw them at them. Eat it! Eat it! <laughs> oh, pigeons in the park. Pretty damn close. It's about as close as we're going to get in a D&D &D episode. <laughs> Just wait yeah, for the pigeons episode. We're gonna be, man. We'll get the berries and my weapon out. Okay. As a yeah, as a glaive. And uh, I'm gonna sneak forward after the uh, the robot. Yeah, you're able to pretty quietly follow the robot. Um... Stepping from thing to thing. 
I mean, until you start talking, then the, the self is broken pretty well, but... Um... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking uh, very stealthily. The, Grim has spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. That's true. <laughs> uh, are the two of you continuing, or are you stopping? Because you're making noise. Uh, I'm going to stop at first, but I don't want Shay to get too far ahead, so I'll probably keep going after she starts to get a little bit of a lead on us. Okay. Um, I'll stay kind of in between the all right. That's the sound of you stepping through the leaves. And the, ow, damn it, is me stubbing my toe. <laughs> In greaves, yep. Um, so, unsurprisingly, as you kind of cross this area, you see nothing. You hear the distant forest sounds of, you know, normal chirping birds and whatever else. The wind gently rustling through the leaves. Is there any cockatrice poop? Give me a tracking check. Nice, nice survival check. Eleven. You see what is probably some droppings and some more feathers and some areas. They've been using this for at least por a portion of the nesting grounds or whatever else. Possibly four yes, the, areas. Is it like a clearing? Somewhere close to the uh, Not a large one necessarily. I mean, this is kind of the closest to it, where it's just like an area of like dead leaves and dead trees that have fallen. Um, dead leaves and dirty ground. So it's a little bit less dense than yeah than uh, some of the other forest. Okay. Kind of Let's. Uh, how about we just place a rock in the middle, put the berries on top, and. Uh, Wait. Stand back and wait. Yeah. And then ambush. Let's be tactical about this. Like hunters. Yeah. Like we know what we're doing. We can pretend. Right? They <laughs> offer uh, CEU credits as well, which is going to be useful <laughs> to you guys later on. Uh, the uh, classes by sending. Or scry. Whatever. Um, okay. Um <laughs> Describe send university. away for your sending stone. Uh, no, okay. Um, okay. The yeah. So you're doing that. And then wh yeah, where okay. where are you going after you set up the little thing in the middle? We should we should take a position around the perimeter, right, and just hide and wait. We are. There's a big hollow log. Oh, perfect. Uh, Good. Mm. Yeah, George. Uh, I was just thinking, could I get try to climb and get up this? You you can try to climb something. Yeah, not good at it. I'm already got a negative, and then I got a disadvantage. But uh, I'm doing it. I'm gonna try. You're going to break your neck. The gun is gonna go off. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Three. Oh, it's the you, berries. You're just not. <laughs> she lands right on them. You're yeah. just not oh, no. getting any. You're no. not getting any traction. It's just. It's just not working. Now it's more like berry jam. How about the uh, Grim hides in the, the lock, and then I'll help. Uh, the sort of height. Grim likes the idea of hiding in the log. He's all about it. Okay. Uh, how are you hiding, to Sora? Um, I'm gonna put them like. Uh, onto onto some leaves, and then dump leaves on top of her, and. Uh, Stuff like that. And then clear a little space for the gun. Don't yeah. move. <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> As you back away, you just see the pile of leaves going... <laughs> I said, hold your breath. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, so you, you pile leaves on top of me? Yeah. Okay. That, that sounds great. Um... Can I have the tiny walker somewhere near the berries hidden under the leaves? Yeah, they can just chill next to the berry. They can basically just go into a... Oh, a fucking cat. Uh, like, not protection, but they can just basically shut down so it's not doing anything. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, and then I want the other walker with Grim. Okay. And I'm just going to magically disappear. 
because my pull the because I actually miss the stealth. And say, hold me close, tiny dancer. Uh, what, what are you doing, Shay? Uh, I'll disappear into some trees, yeah. Poof. I'll roll for it. Are you, this is just a stealth check? Because... Yeah, I'm just... Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't know all your spells, so... Check it. I'm, not, I'm not using magic on this. Uh... Nine. Yeah, probably should have used magic on this. Uh, you're like trying to like get up against a tree or in some foliage. It's not working. You, even you can tell it's not working. Okay, like you can see uh... Grim, and he's looking at you, like, and he can see what you're doing. <laughs> thanks. I'll, I'll try it again because thanks to the encouragements of uh, Grim. Do I get an advantage on that then? No. Thanks to the cheering spot. No. Half advantage. 16. You are able to get in a location where you're able to kind of hide in some bush and like whatnot and just be still um, and wait. I'm pretending to be a tree. <laughs> About an hour passes. Um, uh, and then you see some movement and hear a little bit of rustling and you see a little like coxcomb poke, poke up over a log oh like a, like a little shark fin just, and it's um, a damn wolf again <laughs> he dressed up as a chicken um, <laughs> and so he's uh so this little thing's going on and then the head pops up and then back down kind of scurrying you hear some scurrying and then um some scratch some movement, and then this mutant chicken with bat wings walks into the, uh, the thing. He's looking around, and he looks kind of like the chicken from Moana. So you think you probably don't have to do too much, <laughs> and he's moving forward. Then he sees he sees the bears. His little eyes get big, and he goes, Kah! and then he dashes at them. And then you hear, bah -da, bah -da, and four more jump in, like around, and like, um, Grim, you hear one land on the log above you, like just a, like a, like a, like a sack of like chicken thighs just hitting, just like a, and then it scuttles on. These things are not at all graceful. Um, it's like <laughs> the opposite of like majestic turkeys in your yard. Um, oh God, I love them. Which is all, <laughs> already awful. And they uh, they start like snapping at each other and like hissing. And, like some of them take up like roosts away and then the others go to the berries. About four of them start like kind of pecking around the stone and then you see them grab a berry and like tilt their head back and choke it down. For the colonel? Uh, at this point... <laughs> uh, <laughs> At least five of the berries have been eaten. <laughs> Shoot no fucker in the hip. <laughs> For the colonel! Roll initiative. I do that with disadvantage, right? It's an ability check. Yeah. I would love one of these animals as a. That would be funny. Be I, have, I have several models of them built. we got a 17. I got a 21. Proving that he can do things. Uh, Shay. Still better than Grim. I'm just gonna write Cox down for... <laughs> um, okay, and, uh, Tesoro? Uh, 15. Okay. Wow, you guys are all right there together. That's exciting. So hot. Um, I can't believe I just took my shirt up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, every once in a while, your thing goes to black, so it may not have been seen. I didn't Woo! notice. I was looking down. Either way, they're going to get a whole bunch of white and a whole bunch of hairy. Just screwed up our the white, white balance, balance is forever. Fucked. Yeah, well, our white balance is so fucked. Yeah. Okay. There are a total of six in the area. At the moment, you have seen four of them eat five of the berries. 
So those are the four we want to kill. It is Shay's yep. turn. Okay. Um, I am going to hex the nearest one that has uh, eaten a berry. <laughs> and uh, I would work. Dexterity, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm going to be honest then, with you. Uh, all their abilities are a negative. Oh, no, except for, except for dex and wisdom, wisdom. Oh, and con. Wow, those little pluses are hard to see. Okay, never mind. And uh, then I'm, again, for the colonel, I'm going to try and fry them with an boss. All right, Eldritch Blast versus the hexed one. Yes. Ave Maria just starts playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Feathers just start getting, it's like a John Woo movie, but it's instead John of like Woo pigeons and chickens. doves. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slow motion chicken. Ave Maria. Okay. Everyone be thinking of Grim, Grim is next. Uh, six. Uh, first one is a... 22 to hit? Yeah. Let's let's be AC 11. So just let's let's fly through this. <laughs> okay. That is uh, seven plus uh, uh, eight plus another seven, so fourteen is uh, 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 twenty-two. Yeah, that sounds about right. Blow off part of its wings. And it goes and like spins on the ground and like starts like scattering to try to get out. And the other ones are like, and they start pecking back at the berries, like trying to get the berries down real fast. Uh, okay. Grim's turn. Uh, I will throw a sacred flame at one. Uh, the same one she hit or a different one? Let's go for a different one. We got to take them all down as quick as we can. Okay. Uh, it's a deck save. Roll your uh, thing. Uh, oh, it rolled 17, actually. Oh, that's going to beat my deck save. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It rolled a 16, but I think that's still. Still. Mine's a 15. Okay. Um, the uh, Anything else? Nope. Okay. Uh, the cockatrices will go. Um, you see another two berries get swallowed, and then the cockatrices just go, poof, scatter. And they're just taking off. Like some of them are flapping to get away and going. Um, the one is still kind of running along the ground and it's trying to get away. Uh, they have no no targets, so they're gonna they're gonna just kind of get to the outskirts of the of the area. Uh, Tessora. Okay, Ricky, the tiny drone drone, will chase down the closest one that ate a berry and try to stab it with my bonus action. Okay. Um, they only move 20 feet on the ground, so a few of them have kind of fluttered and flown away and landed on other things. The ones that kind of just ran haven't gone too far. Uh, so you are using your bonus action to give him the attack order? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go for it. It's the I nearest one is the one that she attacked, by the way, so it's wounded. That, that's fine. As long as it ate a berry. Eight. Uh, got a 20 to hit. For four damage. Okay, it's looking pretty rough. Okay, and then I'm going to shoot a different one that ate a berry. Okay. Shoot it. Uh, uh, give me a um, a perception check. This is because when they scattered, this is to try to keep track of which ones you think ate them. Shit. Yeah, I uh, got a 13. The cockatrice shell game. Okay. You realize um, we're gonna have to kill them all and take them all back with us. <laughs> roll a, uh, a d8. I'm sorry, a d a d uh, d6. I'm sorry. Two. Okay. Um, you're pretty sure this guy has eaten berries. Okay. You actually think you saw him uh, wait a little longer and like snap up another one? Okay. Uh, I just wanna be clear that I'm not shooting them anywhere near their throat or head. For this. Don't have a lot of choice yeah, on I that, know. They're unless they're you want to take disadvantage. I am pretty good with the shot. Um. Yeah, I'll. I I'll, mean, I'll center mass was going to be a pretty there. solid shot anyway, but I mean. 
mean, it hasn't reached the stomach yet or something, so I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. I'm talking about like. All right, I'll just I'll just shoot and okay. see what happens. I can always shoot more later. I got a twenty to hit with eleven damage. Okay. That's one round. Yelps. Or cause. One bullet down. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, and uh, I will move uh, 15 feet towards them. Okay. Or am I prone under the leaves? No. Oh, okay. like, I mean, y yeah, but it's not an issue. Um, well, 10 feet then. I'll move 10 feet. Uh, okay, you're going to be moving kind of towards one of them, the wounded one. Uh, the other wounded one to do that, um, but you should be fine. Like, you're not on it but it's closer to you now. Um, <laughs> the... Shay. Your hexed one looks pretty beat up. Okay. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. How far apart are these, uh, these magnificent creatures? 20-ish feet. Okay. They all kind of like, we're in the center and then just like poofed out in different directions. And are they looking inwards and around? They're running, except for the one that's on the ground that got tackled <clears> by the tiny walker. It's limping to try to get away. Um, I think I'm going to dr uh, drop Hex and use uh, Cast Hypnotic Pattern in the middle. Uh, you can hit three of them. And what's the what's the range of it? 30 foot cube. You can hit three of them without hitting Tessora, or you can hit all of them and take her with you. And her tiny walker. It's a wisdom saving throw. You'll probably be fine, right? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit everyone. So a, a massive flurry of color appears in the center. Very pretty. Number one. And everybody needs to make a wisdom saving throw. What's your DC? Uh, 15. Okay. Fail. Uh... You're muted again. Fail. Ooh, critical success. Um... Success. So the super wounded one that you've been hitting and the tiny walker... Uh, ignores it. The other wounded one is hypnotic. Another one is not. And then these two are also not. Uh, Tessora and the Tiny Walker. You have a spell safe of like six, right? Shay? It's like 16. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, 15, yeah. Okay. So, so Tassora failed. She okay. rolled a 9. The Tiny Walker got a 17. Okay. So the Tiny Walker is fine. Um, okay. The... Yeah, and sadly, four of the uh, cockatrices are actually okay. So only two of them are, are hexed. Or are uh, hypnotized. Okay. Uh, Shay, anything else? Um, what spell was that? Hypnotic pattern. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, no, I, I, uh, run towards uh, the Sora. Okay. To pat her on the back, so to speak, on the shoulder to wake her up. Uh, Grim, does that work? Does it require an action? Is there any wording for that? Uh, if it takes any damage or someone else's use oh I can't use an action to strike the creature out if it's just stupid okay. so I guess I'll just run up to them Grim Grim's decided he doesn't want to trust his throwing ability anymore so I'm just going to run at one of them that doesn't look hypnotized and try to smack it with my morning star okay there's a super wounded one 
Um, or you can run to one a little bit closer to you that looks like it's kind of getting away. Um, I want to go toward the one that's kind of getting away. I th you need to roll a uh, a wisdom perception check to see if it was one of the ones, how, how much you think it was one of the ones. 13. Okay, roll a d8. Six. Uh, you're, you're not sure. I kill it anyway. Okay, so you hammer it. They all have to die. Uh, that's a 13 to hit. That will hit. AC 11. And it does nine damage. Piercing. Takes that. And I'm going to use my War Priest for a bonus attack and hit it again. Okay. That's a 14. For 10 damage. It's looking pretty rough, but it's still okay. Or it's still up. And that's all I got. Okay. Um, it is going to turn back and peck at you. I love these creatures. Go, Damn Bam! peckers! Bam! <laughs> Uh, that is not great. So, uh, he is gonna... It's not escaping! That's all I wanted! Um, Ow! So, nine. So, it's just gonna glance off your plate. It's gonna look up at you. And then it's going to try to run. So, opportunity attack, if you want to use your action. Yes. Oh, that'll hit. That's a 20-something. Seven more damage. It flies away. It's a little bastard ba badly little bust for chickens. Badly, it flies away. Be free, beautiful creature Cra of the gods. Crashes into a tree and then continues off the other way. Magnificent. Okay, <laughs> uh -huh. the other ones in order. Um, the one that Tessora got um, with her pistol is hypnotized. This other one is hypnotized. The one with the tiny walker is going to attack uh, Tessora rolls very poorly um, this other one is going to just fly away so you see him careen off to the north uh, this guy is going to fly away yeah okay so these three are gone okay so two are hypnotized and just chilling. Do they get a repeating saving throw? At the end of their turn? No. Okay. No. Um, then uh, this other one is still alive and fighting back and hissing at you. And I uh, just like lashed out at Tessora because she was the closest. Um, Shay. If Tessora gets no save, then Shay. Okay. Uh, I'll use my action to, uh, to make Tessora up. Okay. Um, anything else? Uh, that was my action. So I'll uh, curse the one that the hexplate curse, the one that's on the the Sora. Okay. Um, Grim. I want to chase the one that tried to run away. And hit it again. He flew off and is like 40-something feet away from you. Damn it! You, you will not catch him. Oh, okay, hang on. The three that flew away are basically out of combat. I want to throw a sacred flame at it. Okay. 60 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, Another deck save. Fails it, you cook it, and it drops to the ground. Yes! Remember where that landed, guys. We might need it. That's all I got. Um, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. Uh, the wounded one is going to attack at um, Shay because she's moving Can around. Can I petition that for the uh, episode's name? Winner, winner, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. 11 herbs and Or spice. white balance. Uh, 16 to hit, Shay. I believe that is your, your thing. Yes. Okay. You take 
five piercing damage. God, that's a good roll. Five piercing damage. Okay. And I would like you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, it okay. is magical. So... Nineteen. You feel like a weird warmth as it pecks into you, like, ah. And it kind of tingles a little bit. No. No biting. And then, um... The, uh... What you think it actually does is kind of like, as it pecked at you, it kind of like bites down, and you think its tongue has like a, a barb or something in it. Mm. Um, but there's like a weird magical warmth to it. All right. Um, I think he likes me. Sure. Or sure, Tom. Um, I'm going to hit it with my glaive. Okay. Shouldn't it be my turn? Uh, you are awake now, so yes, it is your turn. Okay. So the one that's that the tiny walker attacked is it uh, fled? More? No, it's the one fighting you guys. It's the only one fighting. There are two oh. other kind of nearby that are hypnotized. Everything else is gone. Okay. Um. All right. So I'm going to. Uh, hmm, um. I will shoot that one. It is that on you. Like, it's you're engaged with it. Oh. Uh, well, I can, I can do the Warhammer one-handed. So, yeah. I'll, I'll try that. Um, oh, I'm better. really bad. I'm really, really bad at it. So, I'm going to use the um, mechanical walker. The, the mm -hmm. one, two, Don't you get advantage? Seven. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I don't think I can manage without no. piercings. But I'll use my bonus action to have the uh, Grony, this, the mechanical walker, uh, help me. Okay, suddenly this mechanical walker bursts out of the the rotten log and, like, jumps over and lands next to you and kind of, like, the cockatrice goes, Rah! and you can whack him with swing down on it for 12 with advantage. Hits. It has 11 AC. Oh, it hits? Really? Wow. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's why I announced that at the beginning, so we could... I don't think I've ever used Cockatrice in 5th fifth, 5th fifth edition, so I have no uh, I have no idea what this stuff is. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I, I said it at the beginning, so that way we could uh, not worry about it. So it's 11. Oh, cool, cool. I get a negative 1 to my die roll, so 7. It had very little health, so you crush it. <laughs> As it dials back, you just pop! Awesome. Um, sorry, that's probably gonna hurt someone's speakers later. Uh, okay, so he's dead. Uh, and then these two that are hypnotized, are they incapacitated? What, what's what's the actual? The, the chance with a movement speed of zero. So yeah, you have totally advantage on a melee attack, and you do auto crit. Sure. So Coup de grace. Let's say okay. that you all just kind of get around them and kind of look at each other and say, "We're never gonna talk about this again," and you just. Whack it. I can check it, just snap the neck. Uh, uh alright. You have killed three and, cockatrices. And cry. Because this is like a crime against nature. And the gods. Or if we count the one that we shot down in the woods. Yeah. So we got so four. four. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's open them up and get these berries back out. Right. Yeah. So a little bit of working, trying to figure out exactly where where you're going, and you, yeah, okay, you get there. Uh, you are able to gather um, that the two that were hypnotized that you just killed had each eaten at least two two berries. Um, the one that was wounded had also eaten at least two berries. So you've been able that you've been able to get six berries worth. You eventually find the cockatrice that's out there, uh, and he uh, he did not get a berry. Um, so should we? We were only hired yeah. for three, so we've got three extra. We need to get at least and three. There's three of us who wants to do a little experimenting in the woods. <laughs> uh, you're you're technically somewhat of an alchemist, right? Yes, I am. I have, uh, who wants to do some cockatroo? No, I, I chose uh, I chose Smith's tool. Yeah, you, so you don't have alchemy tools. Um, uh -uh. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, you could have a if you want to try a little bit, you can have a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna try one of the berries if we have extra. Grim will lick it. It's not so it's it's a crushed paste. 
Oh, now. It's like okay. Vegemite now. So yeah, I'll just scoop some up with my fingertip and lick it up. It tastes like bile. It is oh, mm, that makes sense. Disgusting. Mm, that it's is... got a thick, viscous fluid as well as whatever berry and seeds are in it. it I is immediately spit gross. it out and eat some jerky. I also need yeah. you to make a Constitution saving throw. Oh shit! Uh oh. <laughs> You're gonna turn into a cockatrice now. Well, then you'll have a pet. That's well, how I... mutants are made. That's, how they, that's how they breed. So... Yeah. You feel a warmth. And like weird stiffness kind of go in your joints. You're like, uh, uh, oh, okay, you're fine. You kind of get that stitch when I you think... like try to breathe, and you're like, oh, ooh. Mm. okay. To the other two, I, I mean, I'm like super shoving the jerky in my mouth to get rid of that taste, and like, I think they're gonna make a poison. Uh, so yeah, you uh, have completed this quest. Um, as you're kind of traipsing around looking at this other cockatrice, uh, give me uh, general just perception checks as you kind of look around the area. Ten. Some of them have like eggs. Cockatrice egg. For those. Nine. I got uh, my perception is oh damn it I got fourteen. Okay, you uh. Kind of looking around, you, you you think you see a person, like you're like oh shit, person, and it's a it's a statue, it's a guy with a holding a, a crossbow, aimed kind of near the center of the the clearing. He's behind some of the other logs, um, and you see that um, there is a what looks to be a little pouch on his hip that uh, has a tear in it, and you see some some like spoiled berry like juice coming out of it and right there he also has like a like a hole in his outfit where it looks like something bit him uh there's one of them that didn't come back hmm. i thought they worked with gate their gaze hmm. that that rumor is incorrect I suppose so. Um, uh, I want. I want to try a little experiment. I mean, arguably, my character is a scientist. I want to take a tiny bit of paste and kind of like rub it on the hand that's holding the crossbow. It immediately turns to dust. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Nothing happens. It just. Turns <laughs> okay. Uh, Can you, like, scoop it up and put it in his mouth? No. Don't waste too much of it. We have to... No, but you've rubbed it on a, a stone hand, so you can just scoop it off the stone again. And... Yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing happens. Put a little between his cheek and gum. I give it a, I give the statue a hug. It'll be okay. Cockatrice berry challenge. The new cinnamon challenge. Uh, yeah, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, okay. Um, unless you would like to look a little bit more through the area or anything else. Um, yeah, I hope I hope we can find some cockatrice eggs. Okay, so you're going to spend about an hour looking. Give me a um, an investigation check or a survival check. I'm just going to stay on watch since I'm pretty tired. Where is my investigation? There it is. Seventeen. You find what you think might be an old nest, some old uh, thing, uh, uh, some some poops in it. Gasp. Uh, uh, no eggs. Um, some feathers. Uh -huh. However, you do see something that's clearly not cockatrice made. Uh, roll a d4. Three. It kind of looks like a little leather. Little leather roll of some sort. I examined it more closely. You'd have to pull Pick it, it up. up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it smells like cockatrice like a small shit. Paper tube. Um, it's got some like bite marks on it, uh, but nothing else. Uh, when you look inside, there's a piece of parchment inside it. I open it. Uh, and let's look at the parchment. It looks like a spell scroll. 
What kind of spell scroll? Arcana. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not sure if it's on your list. Or... Okay. I have Arcana. No, I mean, uh, if the spell is on your list. Or not. Oh. So if it's on your list, you'll just know what it is. It should be super easy. 21. You believe this is a spell it's magic. Him, wasting time while he finds the list of... This is not on your list. Um, you believe this is a... It, it, it's some sort of protection spell. Um, probably some sort of like um, shielding against uh, elements or something to that effect. Hmm. Hey Grim, do you know what uh, what this is? God damn it! <laughs> it is magic. <laughs> Grim, it is a uh, scroll of resistance. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I know that one. You can have it, man. Cool. Because you provided dinner, and I <laughs> put some uh, roasted uh, coconut rice. Like a haunch. It, the, the sacred flame does not cook meat. Like, let's be clear. Let's establish that now. <laughs> it's like a microwave. Yeah. Also, let's eat the magical creatures that change you into stone. Let's let's do that. Just I just want to have a piece of coconut rice with me. Know what I mean? I, do, I pick up some feathers. A drumstick. I mean, like, there are the carcasses. You can do whatever you want with them. But okay, guys, I need a, I need. A, you need a beak. A minute. And a... <laughs> no, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll... <laughs> like castanets. I just put a bunch of feathers in uh, in my bag. Okay. Anyone? Anyone else want to do anything? Negative. Pupil Grim is just glad just... nobody died. Except for the coconut rice. They don't count. Yes, they do. N not among the people Grim was worried about. Alrighty. Um, if you're done, then you're done. You good? Uh, where are you going? I guess we head back, right? Back to Grand's Yeah, we didn't. We didn't find yep. any knoll or uh, goblin tracks, right? We also we didn't really look keep looking on our way back. Sorry, we what? can like we can uh, go back, but then take a, a long route instead of just straight back, take a long route, so we can scout at least part of it. Yeah, you could head east a little bit, um, yeah. and then cut back towards the road um, that you know and about. If we still don't see it, maybe we hire a tracker to go with us next time. Um, or, you know, I get a night of sleep. You travel east for about an hour. Give me, um, perception checks for spotting. God, the wisdom character needs to do better. Oh, I can't seem to roll a above crit. a six anymore. I rolled a crit, but I still have disadvantage. Right. Exhaustion. Yeah. So, six. I got a twelve. You get excited because you see what you think is another cockatrice bedding down, but you see that it's a cockatrice that's been shot with little little arrows. Huh. I fall on my knees and start crying. But like little arrows. He's bedded down for good. Um, and so you go and you look, and uh, oh these God. are crude little wooden arrows with um, little red lines on them. And uh, when you kind of look at the arrow a little bit, uh, you kind of take it out, and it smells like poison. Put it back. You just stick it back in the party. I think we should take that arrow with us, because I don't know much about poison. I don't know if any either of you do. Nope. But we could maybe have Minerva uh, break it down for us. Well, yeah. I would say that uh, clearly somebody is here. Yeah, definitely something. It's probably the goblins then, if they're crude arrows. It does look, it look goblinish. Mm. Yeah, at least I imagine this is what a goblin arrow looks like. No, I mean we were shot with some arrows. Well, I wasn't, but when with Majrax leaving Baytown, we we had that little skirmish at night with goblins. So mm. I don't know if it's the same tribe no. or not, but it doesn't look the same. So. 
Shall we have a look around this area then? See if we look for look, look for tracks. Sure, give me yeah. a survival check. Eighteen. That's oh. better. Good. Yeah, you I find another... very. Sorry. I rolled another twenty with my uh, oh. dis. So it is eight. No, Anyone with sixteen 11. or better finds some um, some goblin tracks, and after that, you're able to pretty well follow what looks like a trail. Um, well, this looks to be like a couple goblins and something with bigger, uh, bigger feet, um, traipsing along, and then um, kind of disappears after a while in the underbrush. But it's very clearly heading in a in a direction. Like it wasn't meandering. It looks like it's been heading in one direction for a while. Is it going towards the lake, or...? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm... A little bit more north than that, but yeah. Like... It depends, like... Do we want to keep playing today, at this point? I don't plan for this to take much longer unless you guys draw it out. Okay. Well, then... Shay and I sneak up with the drones... Or the walkers with Grim to for backup. Is that the plan? No. Nope. Yeah, I should stay back where I'm not making too much noise. Okay, yeah. so if you hang back a little ways, then um, the uh... God, what time is it? It is uh, about four in the afternoon, probably. Um, you uh. Oh. Eventually, um, see ahead what looks kind of like a, a bit of a clearing, um, and because it's daytime, you very clearly see and smell uh, what look like cook fires, so kind of greasy fire, and you see the cloud of smoke kind of hovering, um, and a fortress of wood, uh, not insubstantial. It is it is significant. It's um like Lincoln logs, like horizontal across, uh, and you see that there's about. 30 feet, um, as far as you can see in any direction, 30 feet of um, forest that has been chopped down uh, in a circle around the thing. It's about 30 feet and then 10 feet of clear. So it's just stumps and then some clear and then this fortress that has like watchtowers and stuff. So uh, stealth checks all around. Sixteen. You want one for me if I'm hanging back? Yeah, it's just harder for them to spot you. Okay, um, so your number needs to be lower. Yes. I got a 22. Okay, and you don't need to roll for the, the bots uh, if you're rolling for... for I you. do. <laughs> you don't. I got a 3. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, the wall is about 15 feet tall. Um, the towers are another 10 feet on top of them. Um... And from here, is, you it, is of... Palisade? Hard to... T it's basically just a... As far as you can tell, it's just a stacked logs with oh, okay. uh, a okay. little bit of a wooden tower. The towers are about 10 by 10. They look like squares. Um, you see one here at kind of a corner, and you see one a ways down. It's hard to tell what shape this is from here, but it's uh, fairly substantial. Um, the, uh, the cuts on the wood look newish but uh, how much ever time it took to build this is, uh, so this is fairly new um, you can see spear points jog, uh, going alongside the uh, or along the uh, top of the um, the wood and every once in a while you, there are some spikes on the wood but not, not a ton of them um, you do see what looks to be like a door that's basically just um, smaller logs uh, and chains down to them and there are uh, anti-cavalry like log spikes out from that, almost like a porcupine with a door in it. Okay, I'm gonna draw like a crude mock-up of it all, right, and label everything real quick as best as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you're kind of like looking, um, you uh, see. Uh, in one of the windows, you're kind of like watching at the at the guard tower. A creature leans out. It's kind of a um, ruddy, reddish-skinned uh, creature with almost like a um, a lionish face uh, and black hair, tucked back in a um, 
And by lionish, I mean it's got like a big nose. It's kind of bluish colored. Um, uh, so clearly not a goblin or a bugbear uh, that you've fought before. And it has a bow, and it kind of looks out. And it's skinny across the woods. And Grim, there's a moment where you can just tell that he's looking at you, and he just keeps going. So you get that like, oh, shit. And your three was enough. <laughs> You're just standing there, and since you're not moving and kind of just chilling, he didn't notice you. We should go. We back up. Okay. Can we, uh, before we head out, can we get any kind of rest estimation of how many goblins would be there? Uh, all of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, <Fair enough. laughs> it from what you see, if you can guess just from like what you can see and kind of guess that it's shape. Um, at least 30 could fit in the fortress yeah let's yeah. say I was going to say 30 and not a couple thousand but yeah uh, it's that big? it's several hundred certainly oh shit okay yeah we're not going to be able to do this just the three of us no no this is a, this All right, is a reconnaissance. yeah reconnaissance done <laughs> let's get the fuck out of here probably <laughs> yeah. a couple hundred goblins several dozen bugbears and um, Whatever the lion face dude is. I mean, red pl player wise, I, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I know, but. Trying to decide if uh, yeah. characters would know. I'll decide next time who knows. Who would know that yeah. and who wouldn't. So you head back to Grunsmott. It's fair nature. Pretty easy to, to get back to Grunsmott. Um, yeah, neither of the two of them would know. It's whether or not Tessoro would know what a hobgoblin oh, is. Oh, okay. Uh, but I don't, I don't think. Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, okay. Not considering where yeah. you're from. Um, you get back to Grandsmont. You can head straight to Badger if you want to. Mm -hmm. Might as well. Okay. Yeah. So he's um, having a glass of wine. Um, he is chatting with um, the uh, the big burly redheaded man. The other three are, are not in here. Um However, in here now, there are the two goblins that are drinking over in the corner, and you see a couple other familiar-ish faces, including that big, um, the big uh, strapping uh, dragonborn, the Gerardi, with the brownish scales mm. that you've seen in here before. Um, well, I think we should just turn it in. I have two sheets of paper left, so I'll go shopping next time I play. But, um... Uh, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I need to eat like a whole meal. Uh, so uh, I am. If, if you're talking about you as a real person, I, I am trying to end this in the next like five minutes. I, I know. I oh, know. I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I will give Badger the or whenever he's summoned to the to the tap room, I will give him the drawing and the small diagram that I made. No, he's he's just in the corner. So you're, are you going up to him and saying, "Hey, Badger, yes, can we have yes. a okay, okay." Um, okay. so he excuses himself from the guy. He comes over and he says, "Oh, you guys made good time." Yeah, absolutely, we're the best. Well, so that, that or at least I'm very I well, we're certainly not the worst. That I well, put, you haven't, uh, you haven't been turned to stone, so that's nice. And I put the munched berries on there. Oh. Ooh, okay, yeah, and he kind of tucks that into his um, his uh, it's kind of fucking cat. Um, he tucks that into a little pouch and says, "The alchemist will be very happy to get this." Uh, what's it like out there? What's going on? They were the uh, most magnificent creatures I've ever saw, truly. Yeah, they're uh, they're a, I, I they're a thing. I don't, I don't deal with them. I did. They're crazy. They don't petrify with their gaze, but with their no. bite. Yeah. They have to bite you. God, can you imagine how terrifying that would be if they could just look at you and turn you to stone? Oh, jeez. Yeah, that would be... Just terrifying. imagine how terrifying. The, the fee would have been much higher. <laughs> um, I expect uh, my guys will be returning in a few days when they unpetrify. Yeah? And speaking of the fee... He says... Yes, of course. Um, here is uh, 
he hands you a, a, a big pouch of 100 gold, and he takes a little bandolier off, and, um, he, or, in, um, a little, no, I guess he would reach, he reaches down behind, behind the thing, it's a little leather box, and he opens it, and it's got, uh, three, um, vials of reddish liquid in it. He said, good job. We don't have any, uh, bounties right now, but maybe, uh, later, later today, or in a couple days, we'll have some more. Um, we may be out of town for three or three to five days. Great. We'll check back. Good chance to refresh the uh, the bounty board. And he points to a wall, and you actually see for the first time like there's this wooden board, like with like pieces of paper on it. it looks pretty pretty threadbare at this point. And um, actually, Barkeep like kind of reaches over and just pulls something off of it, crumples it, and tosses it away. Um, Speaking of bounties, yes, uh, we also found a war camp. So there is a war camp. Yeah, I'll put the paper down in front of them. A very big one. Camp. This is... Okay, so if I'm right, this is the Smiley Sun. And this is... How how big are we talking? Like a uh, small fortification, a couple dozen? A medium fortification, a couple hundred. Big. Or a large fortification. I mean, a large fortification should be thousands, right? For like a large one. But I mean, whatever. Mm. They're gathering in numbers anyway. Then I will ready I, the scouts. I also tell him about the um, the lion, the red skin lion man. Hobgoblin. That was larger than. If that's what they're called. He says, absolutely, that's probably who's weeding. Or goblins aren't this organized. Uh, mm. And bugbears um, only fight when unified. So. If it is hobgoblins, and they have a reason to be here, and they're expanding territory, then that is reason for the city to be on guard, and for me to unleash more scouts. And then, um, in a language you guys don't understand, um, he calls something out, and the two goblins in the corner look up, and he says something else, and they kind of look at each other, and they look at him, and they hold up, they each hold up, um, the, you know, like this, and he sa says something and kind of nods in the affirmative, and they each hop off their, their chairs and run out the door. He says, well, we might have more work for you uh, in the coming weeks, but uh, either way, good work. Go uh, yeah. enjoy enjoy your gold. Get some rest. We will. And Speaking of yeah. gold, there was a small sum promised us for the uh, Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, he would have handed that to you. Um, so it was, uh, what, 50, uh, each, yeah. 50 each? He, he starts to hand you your, your little cat. Uh, he starts to hand you your pouch and says, or <coughs> badge? He holds up one of the little pins. Nope. Okay. Just 50 gold. Good. And uh, you get that, and you head out, and that is where we'll stop today's session. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. We'll see Yay. you uh, in two weeks with Matt back, and uh, unfortunately, uh, George will be taking a break, um, but we will pick up where uh, where we are then. All right, bye, everyone. Bye.